Hello, everybody, and welcome to Combo Breaker 2023. My name is Ketchup, joined by Ragnarok. Mate, pleasure, first of all. Always. It's time for Mortal Kombat 11, the final Combo Breaker for this game in particular, before, really, in a few months, the next oh. chapter will be upon us. So there's a lot of excitement going around, a lot of stories. The Chilean twins are once again in <laughs> attendance, but so are plenty of North American killers, so... Who do you think has the best chance of taking them out? You know, historically speaking, for all cars on the table, it's got to be, I'm predicting the Twins in the grand finals. If I was any of these other players, my goal would be to win this event, but to keep them out of grand finals. That would be my mission, twofold. But of course, you know, the, pl the path to the top eight is paved in blood, sweat, tears, and bone. And we get to see exactly who is going to come out on top in this grand finals. Coming up first, we have OD Full Auto, versus Scorpion Prox. What do you think? I think, truthfully, this was a matchup that, frankly, I was expecting to see. Uh, you kind of look at the players that were in attendance and you had a fair idea over who was going to be able to make it this far. Full Auto, absolutely one of those players. But it's the forever ongoing story of Nicholas and Scorpion Prox. These two have just been really out of nowhere you know they finally took the plunge into offline competition were able to travel to some american majors uh, we saw that absolute dominance last year the unforgettable evo where rewind the last american standing of course they continue to be dangerous but the fact is there are players capable of bringing it to them and there's just some level of composure these two have that at such a young age is not common and i'm extremely jealous Absolutely. I wish I had that. I don't. That's why I'm sitting here. But we've got a little bit of a button check going on. Sindel and what looks to be possibly Liu Kang. I got to root for my man OD Full Auto. He's been my man's for years. Full Auto has just been one of the superstars of North American Mortal Kombat 11. You know, really pushing forward that Sindel and incredibly successful in the online world and uh, able to translate that success into offline. With Sindel, where, let's be real, this character is a little bit harder to win with in the offline space. I know the netcode for MK11 is fantastic, mm -hmm. but there are still a couple of things around, as is the way with any online game, that some characters are a little bit stronger online. Sindel was one of them. Nightwolf tends to be another one of them. So if the fact that Full Auto is able to be a really successful Sindel player offline, where the character has to work a little bit harder, an impressive feat. Now, it's going to be the Fujin. This is not a surprise. When you look at the characters that the Chilean twins can play, Fujin always there, Cabal always there, with a little bit of everything else mixed in. But I reckon, mate, it is time for our first match, winner's side. This is going to be one hell of a safety net, whoever makes it into winner's finals. Absolutely. Uh, you want the intros, Rock? Potentially. Mm. It just feels like an unwritten NRS player thing, doesn't it? <laughs> Oh, there's no subtitles, right? So I'm, I'm just going to talk over them. <laughs> <laughs> but it is that time. Mortal Kombat 11. A lot of players. This is for Combo Breaker, I think, one of the last hurrahs. Because in a few months, that next chapter. But players want to be the final champion. That is a accolade going into whatever lies in wait. Absolutely. Good momentum started here from Scorpion Prox, who has bit of a life lead now, but of course, life lead and Sindel, all you need is that one clean cut hit with the Scream Cushion Blow, but then gets kicked into the corner by Fujin. Great mobility on this character. You need to back one break away from full auto. And we're going to get an immediate KB into what's definitely going to be the round. Now, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Scorpion Prox and Nicholas, something about them that makes them so ridiculously dangerous, it's optimization. If there is any amount of damage to squeeze out in any combo, no matter the difficulty, it's the fact that they can do it almost effortlessly. Fujin is a really popular character and he's super dangerous. However, he's got some much trickier BNBs that you need to practice really badly to squeeze out more percent. They can just do it every single time. It makes such a difference. However, I'm even getting sidetracked with this because there's been a whole round <laughs> taking place here and Full Auto on the ropes in this first game. Absolutely. Very strong star from Square Brox. Has Full Auto down on his last leg, but Fatal Blow still on deck. Full Auto trying to establish something with those low screams. Duck the Skywalk, put himself in the corner, but then kind of sitting comfortably right now. Doesn't have to do a whole lot. 
Good flawless block on the screen. Dash in. With Punish. I mean, if you fight Sindel, you're ready for the range on that forward four all day, every day. Trying to go for a short hop over these projectiles, and it's going to be the Amplify version catching him off guard a little bit. And you know what? I don't disagree with this. Absolutely. When you look at the variation that Full Auto is playing, off that forward two string right there, this is kind of the highest damage you're going to get, and it sets up for a potential next touch to win the round situation. Having to go back full screen again, that's going to be a risk because you've got to be careful. And Ooh. neutral jump straight into it. That's full auto now with a wonderful little comeback. And we've got to mention, home crowd. There's going to, there's going to be that, that, that advantage where, obviously I know he's not from Chicago, but <laughs> my point is there's a North American in this bracket against the Chilean twin. You know who's going to be pumped. Absolutely, the great whiff punish into the crushing blow by Scorpion Pox and gets grabbed out of the screen. Not having any of that here today, sir. Reads the 4-4, good space control number from Sindel. But is there anyone really with more space control than Fujin? It's that wind push. Doesn't do damage on its own, but the Amplify does. It's really fast. It's almost instant and one of the more annoying ranged options. And if you're fighting against Sindel, low projectiles are a pretty key thing, especially with how Full Auto plays the character. That button is going to just shut it down all day, every day. Full Auto there. Caught on wake up a little bit. The push back into the safety. Huge jump, but she's too low to the ground for the jump in to connect. The back one jumped out of. Scorpion Prox cannot confirm that. And now, wait a minute. The fatal blow's gone for Full Auto. The forward four connects on its own. Back to full screen. Oh, that short hop, that definitely had to be an instant air into the Banshee. It had to be. Absolutely. Oh, up three, well out of range. And the deep jump three, Scorpion Prox takes the first game. Look how calm, cool, and collected. It was a hard fought first game. There's a bit of an execution error there from Full Auto. He tried to do the instant short hop, was definitely meant to be a short hop into the Banshee. Oh no! The crushing blow to start the round. You rarely see that come out that in not, that instance. Yeah, that is not how you want to start the round. Already down over half health, and it's just gotten started. Scorebox building all kinds of momentum. The dash in, Skywalk right over. Gets with another the crushing blow again into the full combo. Optimization, you said it. It's got to be said. It's got to be said. Going for a couple of walks from the Skywalker into the dive kick, like the crushing blow requirement is you take a couple of steps. That is such a layer one thing to get hit by, but I think it works because at this level of play with how Scorpion Prox is playing, I, I, I just don't think Full Auto expected him to make that risk. But the reward was so legendary. The damage is insane as well as Scorpion Prox is just making this look a little bit effortless right now. Full Auto overwhelmed and just cannot get out of this madness. So oh, God! Scorpion Prox clearly not being paid by the hour here, looking to rush his way towards that grand final set. I'm going to need Full Auto to find some way, dig down deep into those Adenian roots and see if you can slow this momentum down and get on the board. Potential for a variation change. I think we've seen the Banshee twice, maybe three times. And the reason that exists is for the reason we've seen it all day long. It's a wonderful move to cover the jumping area. And it, it works against characters like Cabal. We've seen it work against characters like Jackie in the past. Mm -hmm. If a character is known for having that air control, which Fujin is one of those characters, it does come out to play, but it just hasn't had the chance to work yet because Scorpion Prox has just been rushing him down constantly. Absolutely. And I believe I saw Full Auto pick up the air projectile with Sindel. I feel like that's just the, the adaptation, right? I don't recall him having it before. Mm -mm. Interesting choice. All that's left is to see if it works out. Caught by the immediate early string there as Scorpion Prox off to a good start. And that wind push again. It's ugh, the wave dash movement. It makes Fujin look absolutely broken beyond belief when he's flying around the screen like that. Absolutely, truly embodiment, the god, the god of the wind. Full Auto trying to fight his way out of the quarter, and he has, really hasn't gotten a chance to get too much started here in this set. Quick jump out, good conversion. Oh, <laughs> you were so convinced a low was coming, weren't you? You were so convinced. There's the air projectile. I don't think Full Auto quite had the confidence that it was going to connect. I didn't want to amplify it. Absolutely. Scorpion Prox, of dashing in and out, goes for the back throw, has full, Fatal Blow on deck for full auto. A scream and a dream could take this round. Problem with that kind of situation, though, is that it becomes the most obvious thing in the world. Absolutely. Certainly helps when the scream almost goes full screen, but in this instance, Scorpion Prox's objective is going to be just 
anything to prevent getting hit by that scream because that is the easiest ticket for full auto to get back into this match with punish and that's going to be the flying kick as well didn't have meter at the time to amplify otherwise he surely would have doesn't matter ragnarok because this is going to be match point for scorpion prox looking pretty fast as well so it's a full auto back to the wall here got the crystal if he wants to try to attack me on and gets caught Ooh. down two down two again all right solid 20 Seven percent jumps over the back to Scorpion Prox. Comfortably sitting at full screen, looking to pick his moment to try to work his way in. A little bit of a life deficit. No whiff punish. Although, of course, an attempt was made. Looks for a punish on that. And that's a counter hit, my friend. And this is going to be a full combo. Not going to do a huge amount of damage just due to the variation, really. However, it's still going to be a good situation. One that Full Auto is going to push forward in. Oh, the back-to-back -back button to Scorpion Prox opens up with a full combo here. The tactical side switch to put Full Auto in the corner. The neutral jump connects a little bit late. Definitely did not believe in that. Did not actually would have cancelled into the projectile. Now Scorpion Prox trying to get something going, but Full Auto shutting it down, trying to prevent that 3-0 run. With the overwhelming offense of Scorpion Prox, the problem Full Auto is having is that he's having a fight for his life just to win a round. A testament to obviously the correct choice for the matchup, a character that's fast and nimble and doesn't have to worry too much about what Sindel has. Options to have the fast whiff punishment, doesn't let it get away with anything. Full Auto is doing the best he can given the situation though and has an opportunity to get a round or, or a game on the board against one of the clear favorites. Absolutely. Picked his ankles from full screen. A little content to sit back and kind of just evaluate what he's doing, but that, that wind wall keeps him from thinking too hard. Dash it. Another back throw and a crushing oh, blow at God. that. I didn't even see where he'd gotten it. I did not notice it. Uh, it looks like you we're both in the same boat in that one. Full auto. He, he just doesn't have room. Scorpion Prox has spent most of the game just being at that really uncomfortable range just outside of forward four. And then before you know it, he's just wave dashed in there for his next turn. Full auto, this is the last chance in winner's bracket. We're going straight to losers if, uh, well, two more hits connect. One hit of last breath is already gone, Ragnarok. Absolutely, he's got to find some way of getting in. Scorpion Prox doing very comfortable just sitting back, letting Full auto come in, then Win walks in. Not sure if he's trying to bait something there. All right, smart, you can float over the wind wall. This is going to be such an almost impossible comeback. 10 seconds on the clock. Whoa, the whip and flip! Oh, and the wake, wake up, up down one just out of nowhere. That is a frustrating way to go down. However, Scorpion Prox now moving on in this winner's bracket. Absolutely, wake up down one. Been paying dividends for some players uh, throughout the top 24 here, but very strong performance from both players. Scorpion Prox moving on to winner's finals. It was a rough it was a rough set for full auto because every chance he tried to build some momentum scorpion box was there to shut it down the reactions to every movement every block string was there just constantly counter hitting and it just it was a bad day for full auto in that regard it was just a combination of playing the matchup super well picking a good character for the matchup and scorpion prox just having a, a solid game plan the first two games were just like insanely good rushdown but Fujin can do that. He's the kind of character that kind of just has access to almost a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. And if you are a player of that caliber where you've got the movement, you've got the execution, you've got the damage, and you've got the matchup knowledge, full auto was just permanently kept at an uncomfortable range. Either he's getting caught point blank, or when it is range to play with, it wasn't really range that was full autos to do stuff with. It was just outside of forward four distance. It was just outside of mm -hmm. being able to make the projectile almost unreactable. It was just a all in all bit of a nightmare for him. Yeah. Luckily, Flotto does have one more chance. They've tried to wade his way through the loser side of the bracket. But coming up next on the winner's side, we have the other side of that coin in Nicholas versus Euphoring. I'm just wondering if the question of will history just repeat itself? Because if you've seen one of the twins, and I mean this completely <laughs> not disrespectfully, I say this from, from one twin to another. Yeah. If you've seen one of them, you've probably seen them both because they are at such an almost even split down the middle level of skill that this is where it's hard for everyone else because you've got to take out two of them. They play the same characters, they play the same amount of characters in the same matchups so it's like you take out one of them and the other one is still lying in wait for you to have to simply repeat the process case in point evo last year with rewind mm -hmm. rewind was the people's champ the last hope for north america 
uh, one part of the challenge was conquered, but you had to just do double the work all over again, and that's basically what's happening here. Now, Euphoring, got to say, really, really happy for him that he was able to make it as far as he has currently. Uh, you know, this is a fantastic result for Euphoring, and um, one of the major talking points that we're seeing here is laying the foundations of which people will be talking about in the next chapter. Absolutely. Who got top eight at this combo breaker? Who's going to, by that result alone, and being consistent among the current best, going to be a threat to look at in four months' time? Exactly. I mean, the, the win is one thing, but everyone wants to make sure that when they get that win, they can walk into the first event, which will be ECT for MK1, knowing you just got top eight, or you just got top three, you just won the previous last couple months' majors. You want to ride that momentum in. Puts the fear in your opponents, and it makes you uh, quite an attractive player for any potential support, you know? That's, mm -hmm. there's, there's so many things that go into being a professional level player. Being able to put yourself out there, very, very important part of it at this level of play. But now we'll talk about the potential matchups. Who are we gonna see? It's the common safety picks for the two twins. It's always the Fujin, it's the Cabal. Who this time? Fujin? Yeah, no surprise there. And Kano, Ooh. interesting. Now, is it going to be the Kano variation that most people are using? Looking likely, yep. Chemical Burn, Command Grab, and the Bio Pool. It's been a couple of years <coughs> since we had the custom variations take the stage. And the moment that was the case, Kano, although he's a character with loads of different variations and loads of different ways to play, this variation is used by most people because it's just so <laughs> bloody good. <laughs> And so annoying to fight against, I'm going to say. Oh, yeah, I hate it. <laughs> the plus frames, the pressure, the mix-ups, the corner. The less we say about the corner, the better. <laughs> but it won't, it'll be a variation that everyone's seen done before. All right, and the first thing first, the excellent whiff punish by Nicholas, who kicks to this out of the screen, tries to bait something with the back dash, Euphoring not taking the bait. Gets caught immediately with the back two into the dive kick. Look, just look at the, the way Fujin moves back and forth trying to bait something out of you and then can capitalize on it with his great buttons. But even then, optimal punishes, forward three. Mm -hmm. Forward three into the tornado. You know, if, if there was a little bit more execution there, we would have had more damage, of course. But for me, it's just looking for individual specific matchup buttons and being able to punish it. Really important here. And there's going to be a confirm once more, full combo. You get hit, you're taking at least 30%, or just about. And just the way this character works. And Nicholas, the key is always movement. You point it out yourself. Absolutely. I like the idea of trying to use the tractor beam to pull Fujin out of the air, but just was too high up. And gets command grab, loosen up that back. And an immediate flawless block. Good stuff, Nicholas. Once again, shooting in and out of ideal range, and then gets caught immediately. It almost makes you afraid to push a button against his character. It's just complete and utter matchup knowledge. You're against a Kano. The Kano has an opportunity to start momentum. What's the one button they want to start momentum with? Forward one. Flawless block on wake up. Job done. Sorted it out. Throw him out of the corner because really, corner pressure is not where this matchup is going to be won. However, it is a risk to do so, as you can see here now. In doing that, euphoring landing a hit. The matchup knowledge, though, to walk forward and allow the Molotov or the lighter to hit you. It's not going to allow the fire on the floor. Escaping now, we're out there. Slippery, plus frames. Challenging those plus frames, maybe expected a grab or something. Absolutely, of course, we're trying to be party time for Kano, but gets caught immediately with the back dash into the crushing blow, but then Nick Euphoring, look at that, look at the staggers. Oh, but dedicating to the stagger when both of them connected. Actually, does it look like, look like it's gonna matter too much because we do manage to land a full hit here. Back one into Fatal Blow, and it's not gonna do enough damage to kill. And it is, though, gonna put Nicholas in a weird position. Fatal Blow is locked and loaded. Absolutely. All right, go for the plus frames. A couple down ones and jump out. Try to do an empty jump. And the last breath could not save him there. Gets tagged by the down one. Go ahead and have a drink, man. You've earned it. It was a strong first round. Second round. Corner positioning. I'd say it's important, but at a moment's notice, the Fujin could always escape. Now the command grab. This is where those mix-ups are going to start to apply. The wake-up button's the hardest of reads there from Nicholas, but the reward is not only damage, but we're back to the mid-screen where Kano is no longer as much of a threat. But there's a confirm now. Euphoring. This is a wonderful opportunity. This is going to be a full combo. Splat it. What's next? So Nicholas trying to fight his way out of the corner. Euphoring trying to fight to keep him in there, but Fujin not going to make it easy. Jumps over into the back throw. 
Now has a full screen to work with, allowing him to move back and forth. Euphorian trying to get something going, he gets caught by the wind wall immediately. Great use of the back two there. Such a great button at that range. Overwhelming and hard for so many characters to deal with. The Euphorians having to play this real patiently. Still confirms <laughs> that, and the down two just for good measure. Oh, I am almost shocked there was no flawless block there, but maybe he was expecting a Kano ball. No anti-air attempt there from Euphoring. Euphoring's trying to keep this as safe as possible. With the forward one, the spacing on Nicholas. The slight walk backwards to make it whiff. Are you kidding me, mate? It's like fighting a computer. I've heard people make that comparison before. I, I, I genuinely have. <laughs> I've, I've heard people say about these two, and I always refer to them as a double because they just everything about their journey is, is together. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's extremely relatable, in my opinion, as, as you know, one twin to another. See, I, I firmly believe that if you beat one of them somehow, that information about that match downloads to the other one, and it makes that one just that much harder to beat. Well, a big thing about it is they care so, they do care so much about each other's results that if they are playing in a match and then both not playing simultaneously, the other twin will be watching the one that's playing. They will be looking at that opponent and paying such close attention that any amount of matchup knowledge they can absorb Mostly with the play, you know, not the character, just the players at this point. They, they know the matchups on, the, on a base level. Any information is going to be gold. Now, we have seen a change here from Kano to the Terminator. I love watching this character. Question is, Ragnarok, is he going to be able to mix, or is he just going to get rushed down here? Uh, so far, it looks like he's getting rushed down. Terminator, but of course, all you need is that one button to get everything going. But Nicholas not allowing him to have it. Quick down one check, goes for the over, but no dice. Already on the fatal blow territory. What a dominant pressure round from Nicholas. But the back to whips. Oh, he's going to be frustrated about this round so far. Nothing has worked. There's been so many standing ones that just get down one out of. Uh, the one, two, one didn't really manage to become anything. Dedicates the forward two and the grab whips. That was a disaster. But if there's one time for it to go wrong, it kind of has to be now the punish. Are you kidding me, mate? He's just got everything. The knowledge. Knows the character inside and out. I run and no, shuts the rundown. Doesn't want to deal with any of those mix ups. No shotgun. I do fear that Terminator's shotgun's going to be far too slow, but it's that. It's the low kick that everyone makes fun of, but works as one of the best anti airs in the game because of how it looks. How about that? Love it, mate. Good board. And the down two conversion. This is not looking good. Before I got to get something. Okay, command grab. All right, here we go. Here we go. This is how it starts. This is how it starts. Oh. And that's how it ends. For now, potentially. It's a hard question to answer now, though, is does Euphoring go back to Kano? That match did not really give Euphoring enough information, I think, to decide if Terminator's going to work. The first round was a complete disaster, and the second round, uh, hard to get enough information to decide. I mean, based on that, if I, I'd have to say Kano would be the better pick there. He, he got some offense going. He was able to at least contend with Fujin a little bit, but the Terminator got shut down almost at every turn. Terminator, definitely a character that lives and dies by the mix-up, uh, especially with that variation, with the Albi backbreaker, the running man. That's Actually, a... all right. Okay, Cabal. Three games, three character changes. Cabal, in theory, could be a good choice, but it's not going to be a matchup that's going to catch either of these off guard. The floor is lava in this matchup. Look, if you've played MK11 in tournament, you've played Cabal before. <laughs> so we'll have to see if Euphoring's going to be able to, to make this count. It's a reverse sweep. It's the only way to bring yourself back into this match. But instantly, the instant jump one into the air tornado. Like, the preparation was, was so ready for that jump in. This is, this is what frightens me, is the preparation of Nicholas. Euphoring, he's got to be able to get some kind of edge, but it just feels like it's nothing Nicholas hasn't seen before. Absolutely. He almost got the, con the conversion off the Nomad Dash. Unfortunately, just a little too high up still, and then gets the clean jump in. This it's is what we need. This is what we need. The big damage. 41% yeah. and Nicholas answering back immediately. Gets the breakaway, and Nomad Dash, Punish. great whip oh, oh, drops it. I absolutely, absolutely assumed that Nicholas was going to be in the air after that, but must have been low enough to the ground that it just grounded the character. That is heartbreaking, and Fatal Blow off the deck for Fujin now, but hasn't really been a factor in any of the, the matches so far. 
I hope Euphoring is able to keep the head in the game because that kind of mishap will crush you if you're not ready. And he's already got so much work to do now with Nicholas on match point. The preparation for the jump in, the instant Skywalker. This is kind of what I was worried about. They've seen this before. They've played against this before. And clearly, the pressure is nothing to Nicholas in this situation. Absolutely good tech on the back throw attempt, but Euphoring fighting on his last leg now. And it's, uh, you gotta be able to get something started. Trying to work his way in, using the saws. All right, and oh, try to nomad dash, and unfortunately gets blocked, punished for 28%. One more solid hit should do it from Nicholas. It's just piece by piece, every step of the way, and it's looking like a comfortable victory if it continues. Euphoring back against the wall, and there's just an insurmountable amount of work to get this done. And a uh, couple of dashes into the back one, and, and that's yep. enough. It's now going to be the two twins clashing once again in the winners' finals. And it's, I hate to say it, it's looking a little bit like a rerun at the moment. I mean, three characters throughout. He tried, I think, I mean, he did. I don't know. I don't know. It was hard. Fujin's such a hard character to fight, and clearly he was prepared for everything that the Cabal could have thrown at him because they play as the character. And just even reacting to the, the air leap with the instant Skywalker, just shut it down. It was the combination of instant Skywalker, knowing the jump is coming, instant jump one, I think it was, into the air, tornado, into a full combo. There's just... It's, it's as I said in the first series, the, the big thing that, that, that separates the Chilean twins from, from many players right now is just their level of optimization, mm -hmm. not just in their combo execution, but the decision making, the fact that they seem to know the ins and outs of what seems like every single matchup in the game. Like if there's a different character with a different preference, they'll get to go for a different button. And it's unusual. It's not something that you see all that often. And that's just with one character. We've only seen the Fujin so far. We know the Cabal is there, the Kotal Khan is there. We've seen Kung Lao, we've seen Liu Kang, and that's just off the top of my head. But that will be for a little bit later down the line, Ragnarok, as Scorpion Prox and Nicholas will in fact be in the winner's final minimum top three. So uh, knowing both of them though, that's, that's not the end of the journey for them. They want that number one spot. Ludi versus Sunio is gonna be our next matchup. And uh, I'm excited for this one. I hope you like Robocop back <laughs> home. Oh, according to the, the YouTube comments, everyone likes Robocop. Oh. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, I just got I just got completely mixed up behind the scenes here, folks. Completely mixed up behind the scenes. He did not block the overhead. I, I got hit by the overhead. <laughs> Absolutely. So anyway, like we were saying, yeah, everyone loves Robocop. I think that's what we were in common agreement for. Absolutely. They love it. And but now Ludi, a player that has been really looking for a top eight of this caliber. No, Ludi's, Ludi's been on the grind for this for a long time. I know that getting the top eight is going to be a, a fantastic result, but let's be real. If you make it into top eight, you have what it takes to go further. It's yeah. as simple as that. So we're at a stage in the game now where just getting top eight for a lot of these players is not enough. They mm -hmm. want to go further. They want to place higher. Everyone is capable of winning the whole thing. <sighs> yeah, getting here is only one step beating the get twins to, is another get, you gotta beat the if you can beat the twins in tournament setting i'd say that's worth the top eight it's it would be a legendary run mm -hmm. it is something that has not been done yet and that is for me the biggest the biggest talking point the biggest thing to be excited about is could this be the time that someone's able to essentially conquer the unconquerable if that's even a word. If it's not, I've just invented one, so <laughs> great. You know, you can you can send me the royalties in the mail. But, right, Ludi, likely gonna be seeing that Cabal out once more. Sunio, known right now for Robocop, but Sunio does have other characters available to go. But I just think the Robocop, I don't see him needing anyone else, Ragnarok. Right, I don't either. I mean, Sunio does his homework on all these matchups, he knows his options against Cabal, and the, what do you say? The oh, 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 that, oh, the my Thai lord. The suck? All right, all right, that's, uh, there's some lore. There's some lore on that one. I'm going to need that one explained to me, because I, I don't, 
I, uh, the thing is, I could try and explain the significance of that, but I might be completely wrong. Uh, I believe Tybot is the last name of, of two specific players, if I am correct and my memory serves. Uh, and I can only imagine there might be some beef with them. Either that or it's all a good laugh. But you know what? It's impossible to say over on this desk. But you know what? I'm sure we'll find out all about <laughs> it on Twitter in the next hour or so. So I'll consult it during my break. I'll have my tea ready. There we go. So, yeah, Robert Copper, cool. what a guy. <laughs> Everyone's favorite, you know, space controlling character. Robocop has gone through quite the journey in this game. Yeah, I remember when he came out, it was everyone thought he was bad, and then along came some players that really showed off how good he really was. Absolutely. It was it was the tale as old as time. I even myself was one of the players that just thought Robocop wasn't that great because I was trying to use him and we were seeing players try to use him individually, like on his own, as as a, as a one character tournament character. Problem is Back then, he certainly was not a, a one-character character in tournament. You needed to have backups because he had matchups that gave him a, a huge amount of problems. His preset variations were not that great. But he served a wonderful purpose to counter-zone. He counter-zoned a few popular characters, and that simply just got better when custom variations were introduced. And we've seen Sunio set up a lot of things with the spike traps and forcing players to sit and block in them. So the damage really adds up quickly with his build of the character. And not just that, but the amplified, well, yeah, the amplified spikes, the gas trap, it creates a, a plus on hit situation. And anyone that's watched even a Foxy Grandpa with the Robocop, we saw that at Evo last year. Um, it creates a rather scary situation. The grab is a threat, the mid is a threat. The mid can confirm into the gas again. Robocop, uh, the ability to have custom variations helped him so much. And someone like Sunio, a master of zoning characters, uh, this is a character that was almost made for him. Absolutely. From Mournful Katana to uh, Green Arrow, all the way to Robocop. If the character has good zoning, you can be sure that Sunio is going to take a look. Speaking of which, though, the opponent, Ludi. Ludi's going to be hungry for this one, and we're already starting to see a lot of short hops, but the at the air down one, Sunio perhaps might not want it to overcommit there. The threat of a breakaway perhaps might have been on deck. Spending a lot of meter on that amplified rocket at the moment, but no such success just yet. Oh, and there's the anti-air. Great call out with the upshot, but Ludi answering back immediately with hooks. There's the jump in. Full combo now. Ludi's going to turn this into a bit more damage. Spend the meter. Ooh, doesn't quite get the air buzzsaw. That would have been a really good knockdown. Has given Sunio range to work with, and even though he is quite low here, Robocop can still win if he plays his cards right. Absolutely. The High Rocket doing a good job of keeping Ludi somewhat grounded in the matchup. And that game jumped quite as freely. Good, good pushback on the meter and rocket. Goes for the parry. No dice. Down to the last breath. Jumps out with yeah. the cross-up jump three. Interesting thing there is that if he had held the shield down the first time, that down one would have lost to it. I think Sunio just tried to go for the same thing again. And you can see the importance of that wrist cannon. In a matchup like this, Robocop is a tall guy, right? And he fires that, oh, I'll explain it in a minute because there's a full combo that a breakaway and a counter hit. Oh my God, it's KB launch into KB launch into even more damage. Ludi's gonna try and keep this Nice and consistent. I feel like there was an avenue to get more damage there, but oh my god! It's been three KBs so far, and the round's only just started. Back to back crushing blows into the down to Chinchucker. Great whiff punish from Ludi, getting the full conversion here. 24% has to be on last legs. Quick jump in into the Nomad Dash, and Ludi taking the first game. That was a fantastic first game for Ludi. Everything for the most part, worked wonders. It was a bit of a, a slow start at the, the first round. The ant years, a couple of them came through. But it was the confirmation, you know, just the mobility, making a lot of the right calls. It's that classic matchup. You have a character that wants to move around a lot and get in close. You have a character that wants nothing more than to keep you as far away as possible. And that's the wrist cannon. It's what I was saying before I was rudely interrupted by the KBs. <laughs> it shoots so high up because Robocop's a tall character. Absolutely. A good way to shut down the preemptive jumps. All right, good blocks. Catches Ludi immediately jumping, and oh, spends the meter. I'm not sure if that was intentional or not, but 
Either that or just made the call that a breaker wasn't coming. A hard read, one that almost looked punishable, but only just not, I suppose. Absolutely, and Sunio sitting on a pretty comfortable life right now. Gets opened up and no confirmation from Ludi. Now he's getting thrown back full screen. Now you have to be careful with Robocop because you can't get too reckless with your zoning as long as Cabal has Fedable on deck. Oh no, that was a mistake from Sunio. Absolutely, surely wanted the air charge. I know that's been, that execution drop's been plaguing him all tournament long. So it goes for the, the uh, anti-air, no dice, and ducks the high rocket. That should be the round. Absolutely. Ludi would have had to do something spectacular in regards to messing up to <laughs> drop that round. But Sunio, it's a real shame. He, he's one of the, the, the real believers in the air charge, the OCP charge. You can short hop it. And it's something that he does a lot, but when he gets the short hop into kick, that is him trying to do it, and he just hasn't got it. Absolutely. He goes for it a lot when he tries to make you come in and get oh, no. in, impatient and then uses it to immediately kick you in the face. Gonna be a big knockdown in a situation for Ludi. Everything's kind of working wonders for him so far. As Sunio's now going to push forward, side switch in the corner. Again, trying to stop you from preemptively just going for those jump ins. So the great backer from Sunio now gives himself the full screen to work with. Exactly what you don't want when you have him to fight Robocop and navigate the minefield of his projectiles. It's the danger though, Ragnarok. You can't afford to trade when you're low on health. Sunio's doing a pretty good job so far, but any amount of these projectiles that you trade now is not good news. Even that trade. If they had more health, it would be much better for Sunio, but now it's not. You've only got basically 20% left. And you cannot get hit by anything right now. 30 seconds on the clock, that's not gonna be enough. Oh, Ooh. the confirmed Sunio acknowledges that it's high enough. And here comes the Ed Boon 209. Make your guest appearance, mate. Hello. Such a great opening scene in that movie. You have 27 seconds to comply. <laughs> it's a great anti-air conversion for Zunio getting on the board here, tied up at one round apiece. I believe Ludi still has his fatal blow, though. I believe so. so. Oh, that's a big jump in, and the perfect read on the breaker. And that's just gonna get spent. Spend it, spend it, spend it. You're not gonna get any more opportunities. If you make it a quick round, Sunio's not even going to get the defensive meter back in time. However, we're going to get another knockdown. Again, one thing to point out, you know, we've been talking about the different moves that Robocop can take. We were talking about the gas grenade. Hasn't been taken here in favor of the more traditional projectiles. Clearly, an idea of zoning and not wanting to be close range here. Sunio, an opportunity to do something. Absolutely. And Ludi was running away with this, but Sunio has found a way to kind of slow it down. And just as I say that, he gets hot, hit by an immediate jump in. I, that I don't think that forward... I don't think that forward one was intentional. Why would he do it at that range? Mm. Did he try and do back forward one? I, I don't want to. I don't want to be too. You know. I don't want to be too conspiracy theory on that because I don't want to be like, oh yeah, Studio can't do inputs. Of course he can. <laughs> but in tournament, the simplest of inputs in the heat of the moment, they can just they can run away from you. And if that is one of those cases, it's good that we go back to character select. This is either going to be a variation change or just a chance for. Sunio to just collect himself. Let's have a look. What's it going to be? The low auto nine is, is surely a given. Yeah, that's an essential move. What's he taken? The cannon yeah. wants more. So okay. that's two moves that he's taken already. Ah, looks like that's the play. Swapping the grenades for the gas grenades and the mm. anti-crime spikes. Interesting choice, but Sunio has found a way all tournament to keep his opponents locked down in those spike traps, adding, of course, the damage over time, which stacks up a lot quicker than you think it would. And I think just the utility of, of really hindering an opponent's movement, too. Starting the round with that into a very awkward standoff. That was a strange <laughs> way to start the match. Bit of a delayed grab attempt, but see, he's right there pushing right back into it. And yeah, once more, a bit too low to the ground to get the full confirm. Down three is going to be the best Sunio is going to get in that situation. Trying to be a bit tricky with the, the faked out parry. Instant jump in. Not ready for the full combo either that or again, still want to risk it. Big anti air there from Sunio. Would have been much better if the down two connected, but oh, there's a KB, so he'll take that. So the headshot backs up a little bit out of range of Cabal's pokes and gets caught immediately. This is that 24, 27, 30, 31 percent. The beauty of Cabal's combos, they just keep going up and up and up. A big jump in, but doesn't manage to fully connect it there. Recovered in time. 
Escape failed on the throw. It's unlikely Ludi's going to need to actually spend that in this round. So having that locked in, another escape failed. He went for the smart throw direction, throwing him towards the mid screen. It's less likely to break, and that's a match point for Ludi with a KB on the throw, locked and loaded. Absolutely. All resources still on deck for both players. All right, trading pokes. Ludi slowly working his way and using the EX buzzsaw to slow Sunio's zoning attempts down and then jumps clean over the high rocket into the, oh my god, 32% just like that and a sweep. Short hop into the sweep? Can't it's, say I've seen that in a hot minute. It's that time. All right, wonderful throw tech. That's going to undo the crushing blow. If Sunio had any breathing space, that's it. He needs to do a lot more work. Absolutely. I, mean, I would think that this kind of stage would be kind of a hard pick for Robocop because now he has to contend with Cabal jumping off the interactables in the background in combination with the air dash, and it just makes it that much harder for him to try to shut Ludi's movement down. Sudio's going to do everything he can, but at the end of the day, Cabal uh, feels like he's going to get in eventually, especially with how Ludi's been playing this matchup. And he's always had breakaway. The moment he gets caught by any anti-air, any avenue for damage, he's got breaker every time. This is Sunio's chance, though. He has Ludi locked into the corner. He can't afford to let him out, but then... Okay, very awkward standstill there. Good blocks. He gets caught by the down four, slowly working his way back in. Nomad dash. Another jump three, paying dividends for Ludi. Sasuno's last chance gets the forward grab. So much ground to make up in only 10 seconds on the clock. I don't know if he can do this. I don't think he can. Nah, even if he hits him at this point, it's, it's done. There's, there's nothing that can be done. That goes for the fatal blow because with three seconds on the clock, fatal blow would have paused the timer and then who knows, but the moment that moment, the moment that moment, that's not a sentence. The moment <laughs> that clock reached about 10 seconds or so, too much health to make up from. So overall though, the top eight finish for Sunio, that's not going to be the part of the top eight he would have wanted to get eliminated in. Mm -mm. However, it's the nature of these tournaments, right? Someone's going to win, someone's not going to. And in that case, Sunio, Ludi played so well. Absolutely, riding that wave of momentum deeper into the bracket. Sunio showed a lot of character knowledge with the Robocop, but just couldn't put all the pieces together in a way that would force Ludi off of his game plan. And Ludi's going to be feeling pretty good about that, I think, going mm -hmm. into the rest of the tournament. And like I said, it's it's the top eight is, is the start of the journey for a lot of these players. They want to go further, and if he plays like that, he has a good chance to do just that. Now, uh, I do believe... I want to just quickly confirm here with production. I can see that uh, we will be going to an ad break very, very soon. And if that is the case, I want to thank you all for joining us so far. And when we come back, Mortal Kombat 11 will return at Combo Breaker. Don't forget to head on over to the Combo Breaker shop to check out all the amazing merch. But don't delay because that merch is going to go quick. Stress down. Welcome back. Mortal Kombat 11 continues here with our next match. Up on stream, it's going to be potentially, Ragnarok, a sub-zero mirror. It's too easy going up against King Gambler. And I feel like when it comes to these two players, or I guess players in the top eight, King Gambler has been on quite a recent online tear. Mm -hmm. Very solid player who's definitely come into his own in the later part of this game. Always a solid pick if you're looking for someone to make it towards the end of the bracket. But of course, too easy, no slouch himself. This man has been everywhere in the games he plays, from MKX to Injustice 2, all the way through MK11. I'm pretty sure too easy entered, I think, like, what, seven games this weekend? The, the, it would not surprise he's me. He's a grinder. That, that, there's no other way to describe it. If a new game is out, too easy's playing it but also at the same time trying to compete and stay up to date in all the other games that Too Easy plays. So, i am be real, then how he does it. I have no idea how he does it. I have a theory. I think, like Samson, the power is in his hair. The longer his hair gets, the better he gets his player. I think you're onto something though, mate, because that is majestic. Look at that, man. Look at the, look at the waves. They get lost looking in his hair. I'm jealous. Yeah, Sindel could never. I wish my hair was like that. I wish I had hair. No comment. <laughs> I will say nothing. <laughs> Brother, I got a bald head. But you know what? As we go into this next matchup, I mean, look, they're button checking with Sub-Zero as well. <laughs> so I think we could very well have a mirror restart match. I think this is real. Sub-Zero, who's going to get mixed harder? The choice is yours. Who is or gonna, not. Who's going to bless the dome first? 
You know what? I think too easy will hit the first forward too. That's what I'm, I'm saying it now. Okay. I reckon it. I'll too take Gambler. E too easy will go for the first forward too. I will take Gambler in that bet. All right. I will bet nothing. <laughs> but I will say, here we go. Oh, he tried. <laughs> Immediately. He tried. Immediately. He tried. He didn't work. Round one star goes before two. God, I love it. And then gets. Oh, hit. and then you were right. <laughs> and then you were right when he gets it. I gambled on Gambler. And you were correct to do so. I was so close to being correct. However, I mean, look, what can we say about the Sub-Zero matchup? The same character, I think the same. Actually, no. Wait, wait. No, 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 no. Too easy. Avalanche? Wow, okay. Was that? I would not have called that at all. I, um, I will be frank. I, I can't remember the last time I've actually seen Avalanche Sub-Zero in this setting. So I guess we'll, uh, we'll have to see. Definitely not since customs were introduced, but... Yeah, I mean, look, I, I'm not going to make the bold claim of accidental variation pick because we haven't seen that in... I, I haven't seen that in over a year. Mm -mm. So I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt and assume. However, if we go away from Avalanche after this first game, it might be a bit of a giveaway. However, we will find out. Lovely flawless block and the down two to take that free damage. Didn't believe in the fullback three string there, but that would have been a confirm if it connected right there. Absolutely. And Sub-Zero, no, I mean, what can you say about the character? Quick staggers, great backdash to bait out the, the buttons for the long-range whiff punishes. And, of course, the corner. Everyone's favorite place to fight against this Cryomancer Menace. Okay, good block on the S-Ball, but doesn't really get a good punish for it. And both players kind of checking back and forth with the down ones. Looking to establish any kind of meaningful offense. All right. Good block. Oh, and then gets caught. Immediate boot to the face, full combo, double down twos, and it's dwindling here. King Gambler just needs one little toe tap and gets caught not blocking him. A major risk to take, but one that could swing the momentum in the favor of Too Easy with just one freeze. Where we have to remember, Sub Zero. Oh, that was not chip damage. Now, instantly to fighter select. This is where there's a bit of a question mark in my head. Are we going to go to a, a purely custom Sub-Zero variation? Like I said, I'd, I don't want to go straight into the, I think he might have picked it by mistake. I'm just simply saying, at this level, I have not seen Avalanche in a very long time. And now we're both taking the custom variation. Okay, so, so the deep. Deep freeze and creeping ice, I believe that was. Okay. All so right. Both solid options. A lot of momentum, and momentum is key in a matchup like this. Sub Zero's got a lot of tools, but one tournament element that always makes him so scary is just that mix, pure mix, overhead low. Something that a lot of characters in this game do not have access to. Absolutely, and it's a great start from Gambler. Jump back, immediate whiff punish, and now is right at momentum. Too easy down, over half health gets duffed again. Oh, and we got those. That's a hard combo. And you dropped it, but it's still a hard combo. Very close, too. Wouldn't have taken the round, but would have been wonderfully close after one. The back one. The whiff punish there as King Gambler. Won't drop this one. That one's going to be nice and easy. And like I said, momentum, key in this matchup. Gambler had 100% of it in that round. Absolutely too easy. Oh, right. good punish that time. Get a jump over. Switch places now. It is your turn to try to block in the corner. Lovely. Boss One up. thing that Too Easy's always had is really nice use of those almost aggressive flawless blocks. Putting the opponent in a situation like they, they're comfortable to try and press and then you instantly launch them. Too Easy's execution. No! I was about to say on that, so good and drops the combo. That's a giant, giant punish there for King Amber and importantly, corner positioning. Goes in for the low, the low back to back. Not confirming, not looking for the string to land. And this is an element of, of I think, the top eight pressure. Strings that these players are going to be always looking to confirm. And even in the online world, lovely confirm, by the way, in the online tournament space, those back three strings always, always get confirmed into a full combo. Magically, here we are in top eight of a major tournament. That back three is just coming out raw. The whole string is just being used. There's no confirm. And I just think that's just what the pressure can do to even the best players out there. Absolutely. And the string itself, not really all that unsafe. Very hit confirmable, but it's great to use. And then backdash and then whiff punish again. But it's a quick down one, Knowledge. shutting down. All right, jumps in to chase the back roll. Gets cut with a kick to the face immediately. 
pushing too easy back towards the corner, exactly where you do not want to be, especially with a gamber's been going. Like we said, I mean, if you're going to specialize in Sub Zero, you're going to know what strings into Creeping Ice are real and which ones aren't. A nice little down one check earlier on. Too easy. The big neutral jump now. No breaker for Gambler. Gambler prioritizing keeping the defensive bar rather than shutting down one of the crushing blow requirements. Reverse throw now. Evening things up. Health is almost even. Not quite. King Gambler with a slight advantage. Looking for the one two. Right. Back one's not going to hit a smart. Great use of the down four there. Very solid button from Sub Zero. Covers so much space. All right, looking nice. for the breakaway there. Up three immediately. Goes for the front throw this time. Probably trying to bait the back throw attack to get the crushing blow. Oh, too easy. Absolutely tried to flawless block that jump kick. Absolutely tried to. There's no other reason he would have just got hit <laughs> <laughs> like that. But it's match point here for King Gambler. And this would just simply be the journey for him should he be able to take this lovely whiff punish there for too easy. Full combo incoming. Side switch as well. Building towards that KB. Ooh. Okay, going for the down two there. Not sure what that could have been, but. All right. This little low. Trade down fours. And then, oh, went for the up three, but just out of range. So both players are going to kind of flawless block these pokes. Speaking of which, mm -hmm. too easy. The flawless blocks have been on the money. If he confirmed that. If Too Easy confirmed that low string, he would have won the round already. And now there's a potential for momentum. However, King Gambler, a little bit out of range there, doesn't get the full combo and punishes for it. That was a scary situation on both ends. Absolutely. Good stuff on Too Easy for keeping himself composed. Got to push Gambler in the corner. Great use of the overhead. And drops the combo. You hate to see it. Potentially, maybe some tournament nerves there. All right, great use. Up three. Switches sides. Gets hit by the last hit of the string, and then switch sides again. Double down one check into the forward two. This is going to hurt. Oh, but great breakaway trying to avoid that crushing blow. And then down twos immediately. Ooh, commits to the mix. This time, though, it's going to get blocked by King Gambler. We're going to get a full combo in the corner. The breakaway. No, you broke a combo, and it still did 40%, and that's going to be fatal blow. Wrap it up. Thank you very much. See you next time. King Gambler is going to take this series over too easy, who finishes with a respectable top eight finish. But for Gambler, this journey has just begun, Ragnarok. Absolutely. The mix was just too strong with Gambler, able to weather the storm of too easy's flawless block up twos on his down one attempt. Such a scary thing to try to fight against, because you know that anytime you try to take your turn back, you are potentially getting launched for it. The Gambler weathered through it, solid performance, Two E's unfortunately going to go home. Gamma going to go move on ahead. And then we're coming up with Euphoring versus Ludi. This is a matchup that I'm just. It's two players that getting this top eight has clearly meant a great deal. And now only one of them can move on. And that's a really lovely storyline for me because you see it in top eights all the time. There are, mm -hmm. there are players that you, you see in this bracket. You know, I, I'm looking at. <clears throat> excuse me. The King Gambler, I'm looking at the full auto, the twins, obviously. They're the kind of players that when you look at this bracket, you think, yeah, that makes sense. Expected to see them there, and, and they're performing as well as you expect. There are other players that you know have always been super, super, super capable. And it's great to see that consistency start to build up. You know, I think Ludi's the kind of player that you look at with that. I remember uh, seeing Euphoring. Euphoring would, would pull off some incredible tournament, at the time, upsets. Uh, but obviously, upset becomes an expected result if you do it enough times. Mm -hmm. And that's where Euphoring currently is, is that he's just looking absolutely fantastic. And uh, it's, it's sad to see one of these two has to go home right now. Yeah, I mean, goons up. All right. I respect it. Shout out to the goons. But you know, for one of them, they're going to be sitting up in front with everybody else, but the other gets to move ahead in the bracket and one step closer to what has to be considered the, the souls bosses of the NRS scene in the Chilean twins. You have got to be mentally strong in regards to tournaments in this game right now. Because in these top eights, you just have to think about it. I have to take out these players that I know have been consistent top eight places, at least. Probably top four, probably even grand finals. Like that, that's just the way a lot of these players go. 
Now we have the, the somewhat year-long story, maybe a little bit longer, of the Chilean twins taking what was already a difficult selection of top eight players, and now this final raid boss has basically just been added to the top of it. <laughs> so to get through all of this and be able to come out on top, you have got to believe in yourself. You have got to have that confidence. If there's any doubt here, if there's anything at play that's going to affect your gameplay, it's cool. not going to be enough to take that top spot. The opponents that you're facing here are too optimal. They're going to punish you too hard. You've got to bring the A game because there's no room for error. Absolutely. So that, that awaits them through the misty doors. But up, we're going to have probably, probably going to be Cabal for Ludi. Button check for both players, sure. And then Euphoring, I mean, we saw a couple of different character choices from him earlier. So I'd be curious to see what he decides to go with to try to fight Ludi and his air pressure. I sure. guess the question begins, which character are we going to see first? I think from Ludi, the Cabal is ex definitely expected. Euphoring, we'd seen three in the winner's bracket. We'd seen the Kano, we'd seen the Terminator, which was personally you know, what I had always seen more from Euphoring. I think even even this time last year, actually, at Combo Breaker last year, we'd, we'd seen Euphoring uh, pull out the Terminator. Unless my memory is completely wrong, by all means it could be. But, Cabal. right. Cabal, character one. Surprising nobody. <laughs> What's character two? You gonna make the read? Should we make the read? Uh, Terminator. Scorp, oh, okay. Reborn Scorpion at Oh that. yeah, that, that's a button check character right there. <laughs> yeah. That's a button check character right there. I say semi-confidently? <laughs> because restart match is still a possibility. I mean, we've seen some some of the standard variations making their way here. So Reborn Scorpion is certainly in the realm of possibility, but... Although, really, I've got to say, in 2023... Ah, maybe not. I was about to say, in 2023, we almost never see it because of Burning Spear and, and everything else. But, I mean, you're against someone that's jumping a lot, so perhaps the air throw. We could be overanalyzing this to death because they might not even do it. Yeah, here we yeah. go. Fire select. I knew it! I could have kept my mouth shut and it would have sounded like I know exactly what I'm talking about. And while well, I, lo I love that stage, because you get to see all of the classic MK stages on the projector in the background, but if you have to fight Cabal, he's now got multiple interactables to jump off of, and it's just going to be a nightmare to defend against that, so. Yeah. It's, uh, it's always great when you do the button check and it, and it gets the bad stage out of the way, and you're like, oh, thank God. <laughs> ah, Kano potentially hovering over Kano. Is that going to be the pick? Is it going to be the variation? Bio pull, command grab, chemical burn. It's, right. it's the one. <laughs> like I said, Kano's got plenty of variations. Shouts to Biohazard. I miss you very much, mate. Hopefully we get to see you uh, very, very shortly. But really, with the remaining players that use Kano, it tends to be this variation and only this variation. The strong one. It is objectively the strongest, especially in tournament. You've got the pressure, you've got the mix-ups, you've got the command grab there, you've got the damage, you've got the restand, you've got the armor break, you've got a good projectile. Kano is rather scary in this game, however. Button into command grab, the tick throw. Not always going to be super punishable like other characters, but the mix-ups begin, and Euphoring not messing around, mate. We're going in, there's the up three. And the side-switching throw. Is this a chance for Ludi? to turn those tables immediately. Oh, what the hell was that? He is definitely going to need it because Euphoring had a very dominant start to that round. Multiple command grabs, and the moment we tried to jump out, he got caught with the acid burn. Rolls out, and great punish from Ludi. You have to take all of this damage. Sacrificing okay. the final hit to go for positioning instead. A really good choice because it did put him point blank, and if any of those hit, that likely would have been the end of the round. And yeah, and the command. The break into command grab doesn't quite work, but oh my lordy lord, that was a fantastic first round. That anti-air was sick. That was like an MK9 anti-air right there. I definitely would have been blocking there, because I'd be too afraid to try to anti-air Cabal when he's dashing around the air like that, but good stuff on Euphoric. Pushing him into the corner, using the plus runs to go for command grab, but Ludi not having it. Instant air Kano ball, by the way. The instant startup of that move, shutting down an airborne Cabal. I can't help but feel that that's not going to be the last we see that used. 
Staggers it into the command grab, but a jump back defensive now, Ludi. Spends it. Let's just take that damage for what it is. Plan our next attack. Down one out the air doesn't work. The punish on the down one tick throw. The command grab game is a scary one, but if that button connects and the grab whiffs, you are in trouble. Absolutely. Definitely not something you want against Cabal, who every touch is at least 29%. And now dropping Euphoring into the corner. But a simple side switch here could be all that Euphoring needs to take the first game. There's the knockdown. The risk that was made. 1-1 one, one stance. No, never mind. The bio pool is going to be what we are. End the combo in the, the side switch. Mm, got a little too crazy with the 4-2. Gets jumped over cleanly by Ludi, but get command grab for his troubles. Right, opens in the low. Mm, they're trying to anti that potentially. Right. Leaving the string on its own. Here we go, the plus frames now. Ludi trying to jump out. I mean, just because a string is plus, it doesn't mean that Kano is truly just guaranteed something. It does still create a mind game. Breakaway. Instant jump. That is going to hurt. There's no breaker for you fouring. Actually, this might be the meter. It's going to get spent. Oh, we have a percent left to spare. Okay, wait, wait a minute. Wait, okay. Is this it? Ludi is going to have to do everything in his power to just not get hit. But that's where the command grab becomes so scary. Oh, the down. wake up <laughs> button into the down one. Kano ball. You had to look into a crystal ball to know that was coming. Wow. The... It, it was a wonderful choice to command grab. Yeah. It was a great choice because Kano's got fatal blow and he's in forward one range. What's the main thing he's probably going to do? Fish for the fatal blow. What have I got? A command grab. <laughs> Good luck blocking that, mate. And we saw great patience from Euphoric in that round, who stayed blocking for a good five to six seconds all of Cabal's buttons, and right now Ludi running away with the first round of this game. Exactly the start that you need when you lose in the fashion of that. Very, very close, too close to call. Getting that momentum back when it was stolen away from you like that is so important in the next match. Tries to punish the Kano ball, but a bit awkward. Stuck on the floor, right? So that standing one's going to whip. Down one, chemical burn. Kano at his most dangerous when he's got your back to the wall in this. Going for the full knockdown. Expecting some kind of jump. The short hop into the jump too. That's such a, a bizarre situation. Actually, no, it wouldn't have been a short hop unless he went to the uh, gas blast. It looks like he tried to use the air ball there potentially, but Ludi beat him to it. Jumps out of the command grab and gets caught back throw. Good stuff from Ludi. Very down to the wire for that round. Keeping things nice and close. If you have a close match and things continue to be close, build from there. You can't let the momentum get taken away for your opponent to just run away with it. Speaking of which, Momentum on the side of Euphoring as the command grabs. Fantastic. Doesn't manage to get the chemical burn, but every awkward individual hit and counter right now just makes the command grab so much scarier. Absolutely hold the pressure. Gets with the escape fail. All right, can you keep him? Oh my what? God, just the raw nomad dash from half screen away. Looty, sir, you relax. Plus frames to challenge. No crushing blow required as Ludi turns that game back in swift fashion. It's now going to be a 1-1. One -one. Feel like we have a close series on our hands. This is all about who just gets that first bit of momentum. Momentum's been the golden word of this top eight. So many of the characters we've seen here are so heavily, they're scarier. You know, when they're the ones on the offense, when they're the ones that are dictating the pace, it's their match to win. So it looks like we're going back to the character select screen. Yep, going to take a little bit of a break, evaluate what happened and how we can overcome. And like you mentioned, momentum been like a pendulum in this set so far, swinging back and forth from one player to the other. All right, we got the Cabal mirror. Strap yourselves in, boys. Does open up a interesting scenario. How is this going to go? I mean, there's got to be confidence in the mirror. I know Cabal is, is one of the many characters for Euphoring, but we've very much seen more of that from Ludi as of late. But Cabal is Cabal at the end of the day. If you're a talented player and can make it work, there's a reason many players have him in their back pocket. Absolutely. All right, quick breakaway. Very risky to do against Cabal because he has a very optimal armor breaking move. Oh. Well, watch out for the projectiles. Oh, I love the attempt on the flawless block, but just way too low to the ground, and the up two was not fast enough. A full combo now as Ludi has the positioning. The trade benefits Ludi because it does keep Euphoring's back to the wall. I say that 
right as the grab comes forward. So more back to mid screen now. Euphoring tons of work left to do. The defensive, oh, delicious. The defensive jump back too. The armor break, everything worked wonders. Absolutely, Ludi showing a commanding knowledge of this mirror match. Now using the buzzsaw, keeping Euphoring grounded. And it's such a hard thing to deal with, these constant short hops. And the anti, very awkward positioning there. Couldn't get the conversion, but then Euphoring with the armor break, 27%. Just like both of these players have been incredibly on it with their armor break so far. We've seen Ludi do a, well, a ridiculous amount of them against Sunio just mere sets ago. Now Ludi wants more of the punish. That's sadly not the first time we've seen that in even this game. And we're going to get a full combo there, 36%. Goes in for the quick mid of the forward four, no one home, but is that going to matter at the end of the day? The delayed forward two really tries to expect the grabs coming. Speaking of which, that one's going to whiff. Here comes Euphoring, full combo. Armor break! That's going to rescale. That might actually be enough because armor break resets the scaling on the following move. Is it enough? Nope. 15 points. Oh, the ah! crosswick hip up gets caught by the buzzsaw. Euphoring with less than a full point of health somehow, somehow held on. Time with one round apiece. This set has been crazy. All right, starting things off strong. Got you, Ludi, in the corner. Switches sides with the, with the. Oh my God. This is a turnaround. This is a turnaround. When a comeback is made in that fashion, it can really mess with you as a player. There's the fatal blow. Speaking of which, all right, I'm going to do damage in return now, and I would like some of that pressure. And at that point, it's not a bad option. You slow your opponent down. You try to get the momentum back. You're in a good position to try to follow up with the offense. And a again, an very awkward anti-air. Oh, no. Oh, my Lord. Ragnarok, what's going on? I don't even know. How did that down three at the air the way it did. What happened with the jump in? What happened at the end? <laughs> Why Instantly. did it hit like that? Why? What? How? <laughs> Cabal mirrors. Oh, explains it all. Yeah. All right, quick breakaway. I'm gonna go for the forward throw. Oh. All right, potentially could have got a Nomad Dash there. Those instant jump twos. It's kind of hard to say, right? I think because bo both players are getting caught by a lot of the preemptive jumping. It's the nature of this Cabal matchup. Always in the air, but you've always got to try and pull that, that first move off. Speaking of which, immediate anti-air. Doesn't get the armor break, though. Actually, the reversal throw. That's going to give positioning to Euphoring. So one one one's going to whiff, and that creates a mix-up. Am I going to press the button, or am I going to throw? In this case, throw. Hits its mark happily. Fatal blow's ready, but... Using it now would arguably be a waste. Ludi would have to make it more secure. And there's the forward two, the Cabal change. Working wonders for Euphoring so far. Absolutely, got him face down in the corner now. And a quick immediate jump tie from both players. A little bit of a standstill there. Quick down one check, try to get his turn back. Another down one check to steal it. I'm gonna throw, I think he's trying to potentially bait the the command, or not the command grab, sorry, the um, escape fail from him. It does introduce a new mind game. It's why the crushing blow throws, especially in one direction, have always been one of the more devastating KBs to have access to. It changes the whole grab game around. And hang on, forward two, confirm now. Full combo, no breaker. And the double jump sequence, deliciously good stuff. The delayed forward two, correctly blocked there from Euphoring. The double jump now from Ludi. Last chance potentially here, and there's the down back four. Splat it on the ground. And that is going to be all she wrote for that one. Ludi, he looks disappointed. Yeah, he definitely does. not what he wanted. But that set, that was just a constant swing back and forth of who was taking the lead with the momentum. Like we said earlier, it's been a constant shift with that set and this top eight thus far with these characters. We haven't had a huge amount of character variety yet you know we, we've absolutely had the concentration of the fujins the cabals and as more of them progress in this bracket i think we, we're going to get used to these matchups and look that's just that's how the top eights can go sometimes sometimes mm. when this when this happens you look at the players and 
sometimes characters are more favorable than others. Um, and in, in this tournament in particular, it's like we're looking at the, the really final meta. Yeah. This is the final meta of MK11, that we've established what characters are incredibly strong, mm -hmm. which are incredibly consistent. Um, it's, it's no wonder there's a lot of Cabal. It's no wonder there's a lot of Fujin, because some of these characters, one of the big things that was talked about when kind of when Ultimate came out. For those not in the know, Ultimate was the final version of MK11. It was the one that made tournament variations uh, custom. It was preset before, and now you can pick mm -hmm. whatever move you want. Layer one for some of you, but just on the off chance that some people weren't sure. It has meant now that early on people were like, well, yeah, Cabal has these combos, and yeah, Fujin's got all this stuff, but it's hard to do. Yeah. And that was almost a description for why they weren't, maybe they weren't as strong because they're hard to play, you know, not anyone can do it. We're now like four years mm -hmm. after the game's been out. That's ample time for top players to just have execution on lock. Execution's no longer a thing you consider. At the highest level of play, if a character can do something, they can do it. And that's now where we are with the rise of Fuji, the rise of Cabal. Absolutely. And we saw a little Wonderful. bit in MKS because Silver Eye was always there. We had, we had Luke Kang players sprinkling around, but really, like you mentioned, Years into the game, executions taken off the table. You have characters like Ninja Killer coming through, hitting you with five instant air fireballs. <laughs> it's yeah. a different time now. <laughs> but, e but even here, there's top eight. Yeah, we have the concentration of the top tier characters, like the Cabals and the Fujins. But it just makes you appreciate like the Sunios more for bringing that RoboCop, who I don't know if people would consider like a top three, top five character, but just getting to see that little splash in amongst the Cabals and whatnot. It cool. makes you appreciate that. Yo, check out this next matchup. This is going to be a, a rather intense one, I think. King Gambler, full auto, so Sindel versus Sub-Zero, the likely scenario. Two players that are just incredibly successful. Uh, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of combined results here between the two of these, both offline and online. We, we have to give this opportunity. Always, always, always have to shout out the, the online competitive player base. You know, I'm talking about Mr. Aquaman with the Coliseum. I'm talking about Rips Arena. I'm talking about the countless other online leagues and online exhibitions. These players are always in there. I can always see King Gambler. I can always see Full Auto. And that's, players are hungry to compete. There's, there's no other way to describe it. Now, just a quick disclaimer, this is a button check, so, yep, we haven't been uh, just sitting here waiting for them to start. As soon as their buttons are good to go, they'll run it, and uh, we'll find out which of these two is moving on, Ragnarok. Absolutely. So it'd be an interesting clash of, of styles here, because we like to see Full Auto take his time from, like, the mid to long range using the low scream. But, of course, there's always the threat of Sub-Zero's EX Ice Ball, which I'm not sure if she low profiles under or not. Not sure if that's a uh, gamble I'd really want to take myself in a tournament. Yeah, the King Gambler. Hey. It's in the name. <laughs> Looks like we're now running it. Yeah, there, it's a character select. Both of the players do appear to be ready to go. Combo Breaker 2023. Love to see Mortal Kombat every year. The home of Mortal Kombat, for crying out loud. Absolutely. Right next door. Huge shout out to Netherrealm. WB as well in attendance. I think people just enjoying the show, enjoying the event. Always nice to see them out at these events. There's All the right. fist bump, and that's confirmation that we're good to go. So. Is there dead of, oh, yeah, no, oh, no, 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 come on, guys. I'm <laughs> building it up. I'm building it up. You fist bumped and everything. <laughs> the fist bump should be like what starts the, okay, no, no double. No yeah, double. Some people fist bump in the middle of a set, and it messes me up. <laughs> I'll be like, wait. Is it over already? <laughs> I swear that was just game one. Sub -zero. All right, so. Got to make sure your buttons are right. Make sure you get the right move set. So the whip and flip. Yeah, we have EX Ice Ball. And what's going to be the last choice here? Yeah, quite a few choices to make. Haircut. Okay, now, I mean, there's an element here of just trying to get some damage on deck. Not surprised that Full Auto is doing this because, I mean, if you're going up against Sub-Zero, reality is he's going to get in at some point. And if he does anything unsafe, whether it's a slide, whether it's an overcommitted two forward two, 
Haircut is just going to give Sindel the highest damage she can get, and it's as simple as that. You want to punish, punish, punish. Your bloodline descends from a dinny. Why did my ancestors flee your kingdom? <laughs> Lee, I had them banished. All right, now that that's out of the way, had the intros rock a little bit, you know, Sindel looking fresh. I'm going to be real with you, mate. I can't hear it. Yeah, <laughs> I can't hear it either. They could be saying anything. There's the down one. The turn, Alawa for King Gambler. Swiftly interrupted by the turn stealer. The forward four at mid range. <laughs> you gotta love that forward four. All right, try to get something going with the scream. No dice, Gambler gonna jump in. Looks like the jump one gets caught. Doesn't get the conversion and blesses the dome immediately with the overhead. And Rising Ice, such a good move for those mid range combos. It just opens up so much potential for Sub-Zero mid screen and you know, the less we say about those corner combos, the better. <laughs> that damage is absolutely disgusting. However, full auto, some range to play with. Catching the empty jump into a throw, again, playing it nice and safe, being nice and cautious. But full auto is going to be nervous, potentially, of those slides, of one good jump in. So it's a scary game to play. King Gambler, fatal blow. You get hit by an ice ball here, which is why he went for it. But that's why the punish is on the other end. Full auto, no, full auto, mate. I thought you were going to deal with the breakaway. <laughs> what happened? I was expecting the down two or something to come there, but. Surely he must have tried it. I uh, did brain freeze, maybe. Oh, nah. either way. <laughs> It's done, and it's in the past, and it was only the first round, so forget about it. Here we go into the next round. So not the way you'd want the round to end, but important to note that now Gambler has come off of the Fatal Blow. It'll be one less thing for Fallout to have to worry about going forward. Whiff. Oh, tried to whiff punish, but actually didn't get the, the recovery frames. Otherwise, that throw would have been guaranteed. You can't take a throw on a punish. Cancel. Oh, ready for the cancel, Gambler. Not going to let Sindel get away with anything offline. Mm -mm. Drives Dagger into the low. All right, forward four. Retreating, and then it caught immediately by the slide. Reverse counter. Escape failed. Music to your ears as a Sindel player. <laughs> However, I'm loving this patience from Full Auto so much. Oh, what? Wow. On, okay. He went for it, and it paid off. A Gambler getting the freeze combo. Rising eyes, 35%. Another full combo. You can see this is why Haircut is being used against Sub-Zero here. Just, yeah, obviously the combo potential on its own, the punish on the slide, patience. It's the number one key for full auto. But yeah, this Haircut, you block something from Sub-Zero, you're getting damage. Damage that can kind of compete with him somewhat. I love that forward four. Went in for a grab last time where the tech throw came through. In this case, nah, just a straight mid. Yep, still wants to uh, save that potentially for a round clincher. Daggers in, and that, oh, that's it. That's spend it. Spend it. Mm. Now, it's not going to be the flat damage. It's going to be the damage over time. But that's still not going to be great for King Gambler. And we must remember, Fatal Blow's been spent. We're not going to have that instant comeback factor. However, are we just going to mix our way to victory? Right, combo one. One, two. Uh, 43%. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> out of full. Jumps immediately and oh, gets oh. caught by the overhead out of the air. Gambler shut down moment and then no! three jumps over it. Oh, good lord, no. And there's no breaker. There's no breaker. <laughs> a full combo and a full comeback. That is not going to feel good if you are in full auto's position. But that's what I was saying. The fatal blow wasn't even available, but this is Sub-Zero. Sub-Zero still mixes. Sub-Zero still can use the crushing blows for the damage. He's got the, without it. He's got wonderful damage. It goes to show you are never safe against Sub-Zero, especially if he gets you into the corner. How fast did that round turn around? That will simply be a frustrating way to lose the first game for Full Auto. But we've got to give props. The clutch and the composure there for King Gambler. The execution to see the job done. And before the comeback was made, Full Auto was doing a fantastic job. I would like nothing more than to see this come down to a final game. Uh, oh, wow. Very uh, ballsy opening, and then it's caught me with a slide. That's one down for the crushing blow. Big jump in. Oh, that's the kind of jump in that just don't feel good. It's like, mate, I've, I, the moment I did this move, you jumped. The moment I did it, it's like frame one. Are you the AI reading my moves? 
All right, good stuff from Otto. Need to slow down Gambler's momentum. Big combo, 30%, and then drops the last bit of it. And it actually looked like that drop was punishable if that down one gave us anything to go by. Sadly for full auto, that just took away any ounce of a chance for just pushing forward and, and getting your own offense going there. Absolutely, now he's in the exact place you do not want to be. He's tagged by the down four. Gambler, good stuff on the back throw. Interesting choice there. And then back a, to back. It's a, a double layered thing. There was a possibility to go for the less expected throw direction. That could have bet up for a escape failed, which would just made Sub-Zero's rush down even more scary than it already is. Speaking of which, we're going to get a confirm now. No breaker from Full Auto, opting to save it, but no. Oh, the low again. That could have been the end of the game if King Gambler was ready. The down four to try and create some space. Over commits to the haircut. Full auto. I feel really, I feel really bad because it's all fallen apart. Everything was was up until that one comeback. It was looking as close as anything. And ever since that comeback was made, it just looks like oh. Gambler has completely steamrolled him since. It is, as we've said, that number one word. It has been a momentum-heavy top eight, and it is continuing to be. Delicious Antia, wonderful stuff there from Full Auto. Giuliano commits to unblock. Gambler taking full advantage on the punish. Okay. I can only assume there is some kind of mind game there with the haircut, but unfortunately for Full Auto, it's just not working. Gambler, not as much, there's no need to take these risks mm -mm. if you're in Gambler's position. He's got, he's got a life lead, he's got a comfortable position to work with. The okay. chance of just getting hit by a haircut. No, the drop! This I has been from bad to worse, Ragnarok. This is not how Otto wanted his top eight run to go, I'm sure. And now he gets caught by the back throw. Gambler getting ready to 3-0 full auto out of losers. If there's any moment that you have to say to yourself, wake up, it's now or never. This is losers bracket. This is elimination territory. Full Auto is not going to be satisfied unless he wins this tournament. He has, he is a champion in his own right. And then gets caught going for the grab by the down to the chin checker, doubling up to try to just bait the breakaway. But I don't know. Otto's in a rough spot right now. It is just unfortunate that that's one of the words to, that comes to mind because Full Auto has played just out of his mind the whole tournament to reach this top eight the way he has done and. Uh, this match against Gambler is, so it's, it's one of those things where it just feels like everything that could go wrong has gone wrong. And it happens. However, we're talking as if it's over. It's not quite yet. King Gambler has been able to land himself a full combo here. And he's going for the down two just to make it extra unbreakable. The pushback, the fatal blow, run in, grab at the wrong distance. And even if you break, the down two is going to connect regardless. That is a shame, a shame to see Full Auto go out this way, but... And you can almost see it on his face, like just the look of disappointment there. That, it was, like I said, it, it was going pretty back and forth at in the beginning. Then that one comeback happened, and it was all downhill from there. <sighs> it, it seemed like a, a crucial turning point. He, he was playing perfectly, perfectly fine up until the comeback was made in game one. And from that point on, there were some extremely uncharacteristic moments from him. There was over committing to haircut on block. There was strange combo drops, missing the haircut not once but twice at the end of a combo, getting punished both times. Um, it, is, it is unfortunate to see because obviously Full Auto would have expected to get further than that. Obviously no shame in losing to King Gambler. Not but at all. after that comeback was made, it just seemed a little bit like just mentally not 100% there perhaps, or either that or just a bit frustrated. I don't want to speak on behalf of him, of course. We can only go by what we saw in the match itself. But I tell you what, either way, enough of that. We're going into our next few matches in this top eight now. But before we do so, it's time for a few ads. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you in a few minutes' time. Yo, you see that overhead? Oh, my goodness. Wow. Nobody was blocking that. Ooh, I anything. definitely got hit. That Ooh. was wild, man. These matches have been great. Oh, absolutely. You know what? We're about to take a quick break here, and Combo Breaker 2023 is still going on. Uh, don't worry, this time we're going to order for yeah, it. Yeah, we got you. Don't, don't even worry about Be it. Be right back. Don't forget to head on over to the Combo Breaker shop to check out all the amazing merch. But don't delay because that merch is going to go quick. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. It is now time here for MK11's Winners Finals with the Rising Stars. Rising stars that this can simply only be the beginning of their journey together. 
uh, Scorpion, Prox, and Nicholas. This is not the first time they have played against each other in a major top eight for Mortal Kombat 11. In fact, I think they've had to do it almost every single time. As you can see, the bracket before you, Euphoring and King Gambler make up the rest of this top four. And on the winner's side of this bracket are the two twins from Chile, Scorpion Prox and Nicholas. Just a bit of insider info for those unaware. They do not tend to use their regular everyday characters. However, that could change today. We could expect anyone Ragnarok in this matchup. Absolutely, they are the wall. Getting past one and getting past the other, it almost seems insurmountable. I want to address something actually with these two because I've seen people online in the past. And I must admit, it's, it's not recent because obviously we have not had a Mortal Kombat 11 event like this in a while. I have seen people in the past say it's really strange how they have these set tournament characters like the Cabal, the Kotal, the Fujin. Why do they play all these different characters when they fight each other? I've even had people go like, oh God, isn't that like collusion or something? Let me tell you, from one twin to another, when you practice against the same person all day, every day, to the point where you can play basically any character in the game and it's tournament time, there is always this element that you are gonna need something unpredictable. And in this case, um, it's, it's gonna be a Nightwolf mirror again. We've seen this before. But I mean, we've, I, I've seen twin brothers play each other in tournament and use different characters purely because they need something to be different. Because they're gonna be, they're so familiar with, they're gonna be familiar with the Cabal, the Fujin, the Kotal Khan. You gotta mix it up. I mean, you know, shout outs to H Dope and K Top over in Greece. They did the same thing in Mortal Kombat 11 and MKX and, and, and whatever else they're playing these days. Looks like it's gonna be Nightwolf. And I think, I think they're going right into it too. If they are, then if there's one thing we can see here, is it gonna be the Reflect? Are we gonna see the game of Reflect? The Nightwolf mirror is one of the things that confuses me a bit, but again, it, it's so unpredictable with how often they play. So it's a very interesting character too. They might just really enjoy the mirror. There might also be some banter behind the scenes. And look, I mean, if you pick any of these characters and it's unusual for some, it's your tournament life you're playing with. You know, that, that's, that's my train of thought on the whole thing. If they believe that the Nightwolf mirror is something that gives them their edge against each other, then I'm here for a Nightwolf mirror. And you know how you avoid that altogether? You beat one of them in tournament. Exactly. And you prevent this whole situation from happening. But I tell you what, it's rare that you see Nightwolf anyway. So in this kind of matchup, it's going to be command grab now, turn it around. All right, Ops not to spend the meter there for the extra hit advantage. Is punished and immediately launched. No breakaway available. Command grab Ender. There's one thing Nightwolf does in this game, it's hit hard. This character's damage is ridiculous. And there's the punish. Forward one, two, fatal blow does not work. It knocks them too far away. I thought for sure that was going to hit. No, it seems it to reach out very far. It, it's, it's actually one of the things with Nightwolf that it was like, you think it works, but because the two knocks them so far back, it most of the time just doesn't hit. Mm. Well, Scorpion and Prox edging out that first round there. Pretty back and forth from both of them, though. All right, command grab whiff too far away to get the punish, but his immediate whiff punish goes right into the command grab. Trying to catch the breakaway. Nightwolf's armor breaker is that command grab. The meaty 2-2. Two, two. In this case, it's going to be the full combo to confirm. Mistimes the forward two, though, as the turnaround is real. The forward one, again, trying to catch a potential breakaway. Here comes Nicholas with the knockdown. Significantly more meter for Scorpion Prox right now. There's that forward one, too. Again, the breaker keeping it nice and safe. Doesn't have the meter to turn that into anything, so it's just going to be that back three string on its own, sadly. And now full combo once more too far away. The combo enders have been a real trouble for the two of them so far. Yeah, it's been the tale of this, this first match so far that they're too far away in these combos to get a proper ender. You see the down two just seemed to seal it. Nice one, one, one. Catches the jump. That's something so common with Nightwolf. A fast forward dash. He's one of the he's one of the characters that's really good at dashing under a jump in as well and getting the trip guard one one one. We see Foxy Grandpa do it rather often. So a very good movement from the character. Quick dashes, short pokes. Used to try to steal a hit advantage and a great flawless block and goes for the armor break but too far away again. Was the right decision but just not the correct range. Rare footage of Nightwolf's down four being used in tournament. <laughs> 
And yeah, down one. Ooh. Still trying to squeeze out a little bit of damage here, but it's, I guess, maybe the lack of micro dashes. I imagine they're quite awkward combos to try and land. Extra knockdown frames just dials in that forward two into Arrow. Oh, that reactionary block. All right, great up three. Tries to dagger into the overhead. He gets caught whiffing buttons, goes right for the low jump in. Didn't have meter. If there was meter available, this would potentially be a different story. There was that flawless block on the jump. Again, maybe looking for it. There's the break, the full string, the dashing grab, beautiful tech, the, the jump back two is enough to take that first game for Nicholas. And I ask you a question, Ragnarok. Mm -hmm. I was about to say, do we change characters? But nope. are they just going to go Nightwolf the whole way? Run it all the way. Well, I'm, I'm here, here for it. it. <laughs> <laughs> we say snap in the UK when that happens. <laughs> Uh, it's a quick breakaway. Something both players have been very good about is immediately spending their defense meter on this breakaway because they don't want no part of Nightwolf's damage that you mentioned earlier. All right, trying to trade pokes here. I want to know what it is about the Nightwolf mirror that makes them use it against each other so often in tournament. Because this is not the first time they've done it. But look at how they're playing. Like. Maybe it's These are a, good night wolves. Maybe it's just like a really fun mirror match to run. I, I don't know. Either way, that's a full combo once more. 30% at least. Oi, look away. The pointy <laughs> end of that one. Yeah, dashing in. Get the throw upon his shoulder check. Not quite enough to do it, but then backing away. Oh. Back to back down once here. Wow, the pickup. Spend it. He is going to spend. Look how much hit advantage he gets. Meter burn. That's my grab. And immediately. Oh my god. Oh, wow. that would have worked. That would have worked. And that was so sick. But you were just too far away. What a sequence. That was just so wow. ridiculous. That, all right. Amplify the command grab to get extra plus frames to make the jump in more obvious to do nothing. But then, oh god. <laughs> I looked at the screen at the worst time. I, I can't even break that down fast enough because the next round's already in motion. We'll talk about it later, mate. <laughs> All right, he's interactable to escape. He gets caught by the arrows and immediately just shuts him down. Nihil's forward moving string such a good button in that mid-range. Absolutely. It does lead to a considerable amount for him. If you're able to confirm it, gives him plenty of combo potential, especially with this variation for launching up to now. Knockdown time, Scorpion Prox, driver's seat, the 1-1-1. One, one, one. No, the breaker comes out, but 1% left with Ooh. punish. And now, restart match. It Just one, another. one after the other. The last time I saw these two play, it was character change after character change for all five games. Looks like they're giving us a very opposite affair. There's the armor break. Are we spending it? Oh, oh. Yes, we are. Ah, I don't even want to... Nah, I'm moving on. You don't need to imagine it, mate. We saw it. <laughs> we saw everything. <laughs> right. It's all about just enforcing that turn. What's it going to be? So many of these just stray hits have, have connected and they're being turned into significant... S turned into significant damage. Apparently, I can't talk today, but I'll just blame jet lag for that. He just ducked the first two arrows, reflected the third one. I'd this is my point. Ro tech. Robot. Tech and knowledge. It, it's, it's what makes the two of them so dangerous. Now we're going to get a full combo into knockdown. And we're going to just rinse and repeat and land ourselves another one. This time, Scorpion Prox taking the lead technically in this series at the moment. Although, eats that jump two for breakfast. Right, drops the combo. Down one, there's a punish. Environment hmm. interaction to escape. And yeah, standing one. We've seen quite a few Mortal Kombat 9-esque anti-airs in this top eight, and I'm here for it. Yeah. And uh, so far, Nicholas with a pretty commanding lead over Scorpion Bros. Gets another clean opening. And both players off position. Scorpion Bros. back in the corner, sitting on Fatal Blow. Would need one hell of a hit to get this comeback going. This could wow. be the start of it. Scorpion Prox just dialed in that 1-1-1 back forward forward just on the off chance that final hit landed and was bang on the money. Not that it really matters, of course, because the round was won by Nicholas, but right. Split down the middle. We are even once again. Right. Instant jump. 
Four of that. All right, quick down one. Trying to stagger into the command grab. Mm. Mm. Spends right. it. Plus frames time. Oh, lets the whole thing go, actually. I think that might have been potentially a drop of execution, I'm sure, to try to turn that into a combo. Had the meter. All right, now my turn. Jump quick to three, great flawless block. Challenges immediately with this 1-1-1 one, one, one and gets the another command grab, punishing the breakaway, and we have to see it again, unfortunately. Ouch. Oh, you want to press a button? Eat this forward one too, my friend. Another combo drop. Nicholas, Nicholas has definitely had more trouble with the Nightwolf combos than Scorpion Prox. However, looking for the armor break. The, again, the idea was there. The breaker came, but the grab just did not hit its mark. And there's the 1-1-2 one, one, Nicholas takes the lead again. Are we going to go Nightwolf? We are going to go <laughs> Nightwolf. What is it about this mirror that just makes the two of them go, yes, this is the matchup for us? Because it's not like they're messing around. These are two ridiculously good Nightwolves right here. I mean, I'm just sitting over here, but it seems like kind of a fun mirror to play. I don't know if I would do it, but they could just generally enjoy it. I, I have no, oh my God, the micro duck. We'll just call that an accidental reset. It definitely led to uh, double combos for the trouble, so. As we say in the business, we take those. Nicholas now with the corner. Lovely block on that forward too. Looking to whip punish maybe. I don't know what that. Lightning yeah. fast. Some kind of option select maybe. Mm -hmm. I'm not even going to try and imagine what it could be. All right. Ooh, just Ooh. out of range too. All right, Ducks, no punish. Oh, Very late on the down two attempt. I just don't think in that instance, it's just they're, they've got to be so used to each other that when weird stuff happens, you ain't ready. Right. Okay, both players getting into the danger zone. Double Fatable is about to be on deck. Neither of them are getting auto shimmied by like 1-1-1. No, they are not having it. I could be commenta uh, commentators cursing that, but we, that's normally a very common thing that we see from Nightwolf. That 1-1-1 is like the key button. Standing two, if that was dedicated to anything else, that could have been a lot more. Actually, we're going to spend the meter. Yes, we are. What are we doing with those plus frames? Creating space. Not a bad choice. The back one. Oh no, oh, what's going on? What on earth was that? Oh my lord. And the combo just went for the wrong string. Oh, oh. Ragnarok, what the <laughs> hell is going on? I'm too jet lagged for this. I I could not explain the last 25 to 30 seconds of that. That makes two of us. And there's the armor breaker. Uh, finish it. Oh, KB. <laughs> Right in the nuts. All right, clean jump in, and this is looking all Scorpion procs right now. Nicholas Cook waking up with the standing screen. Nothing to lose, really, in this situation. Both of these players have been having issues just finishing their play. I know Nightwolf, like, the, the harder, more damaging combos are a bit tricky because there are a lot of micro dashes and various, you know, situations where they work and they don't work, but even then, Letting it go. The down three, stealing a turn. The invincibility of the escape. All right. No more last breath. Nicholas, you got to do this the old fashioned way, my friend. Yep. And loses the quick draw contest. Scorpion Prox now sitting at full screen against Nicholas, who will get his defensive meter back. The match point continues, though, as Nicholas is the one in the lead. Ooh, not sure if that was supposed to be a flawless block, but you know what? Again, we'll take it. Full combo now, Scorpion Prox. This time we get the whole thing, and that does just shy of 40. Like I said at the start of this series, Nightwolf, if there's one thing he doesn't lack, like, it's damage in that sense. Throw escape, get off me. So Nicholas sitting about, getting close down to half, now just officially over the threshold. Scorpion Prox trying to get some kind of strong momentum started. Really trying to abuse the down four and the down three. They're trying to open up the forward two as Ask and ye shall receive. There comes another armor breaker. Although Crushing Blow had already been used in this match, so that's just going to be regular damage by itself. Forward one, two. All right, Fatal Blow, just in case you break. Nicholas does the right thing, holds on to the defensive bar. Might be able to use that to secure this second game, bringing us into a game five. All right, dumps him in the corner with the Fatal Blow. Quick cross up, jump three is blocked. And now reflects the arrow right back at him. Scorpion Prox. Great reactions. I'd say is this gonna come down to Nightwolf versus Nightwolf, but I think we know the answer to that question. It's because we do. We can <laughs> see the production monitor and it is in fact gonna be Nightwolf again. Antia. 
for the flawless flock. A lot of resources have been spent straight away. Nicholas only one bar of offensive meter to his name currently, although this command grab ender, we amplify, we spend it all just to escape the corner. Absolutely, wake up up two, but drops the combo. Unfortunate, Nicholas getting a good start here. All right, trading down once, goes for the command grab, duck and punished. In this instance, mm. that command grab hits its mark once more, and here comes 34% just like that. And now the 1-1-1 one, one, one again will hit its mark. Forward 1-2 for the ender, making it nice and guaranteed this time. Losing out on 2%, but look, we already have a sizable life lead. The command grab comes back to play once more. Fatal blow. Watch it. Watch the fatal blow. Watch your head. And you wouldn't think he would walk up and hit you with the slow overhead like that, and then he does. I gotta say, they're going for all kinds. They're pretty much using every string and button available to Nightwolf, which in a way might make the forward two a little bit easier to connect because they're looking for so much more than just one, one, one or down three. Mm -hmm. Either way though, that's Nicholas on match point for a second time. However, it will be Scorpion Prox in the driver's seat currently. The down one anti-air, again, like I said, what is it with the MK9 anti-airs in this top eight? I love to see oh, it. Oh, he tried again. It got stuffed. That's an MK9 thing. <laughs> Need that smoke standing, too. That's a great button. Right? Love it. All right. Good block on the overhead. Goes for the low. Block all of them. Goes for a sweep. Interesting choice there. Like I said, using all of Nightwolf's buttons. Ooh. Ooh. That cannot have been intentional. Either that or maybe it was meant to catch a breakaway. But either then, actually, I'm not quite sure. There's no meter for it. Big jump in, Nicholas. It's time to play the double, the double. Oh, that! If that armor broke there, that would have hit like a truck. Speaking of which, full combo, but no meter for the combo and the turnaround. I'm gonna match this against you, my brother, and you will like it. Wow, got hit and said, you know what? I'll bet you this is gonna hit. I, that hey. is the kind of thing I would do to mustard. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I can almost hear him yelling from across the pond. What do you mean across the pond? He's in the crowd. I mean when you do it to him. Oh, I see. <laughs> I see. So I had to. I had to, I had to no, quickly, I know. I see him out there. Had to quickly clear that <laughs> one up as it's now match point for both brothers. A lot of momentum from this forward throw. An immediate jump in. Oh, right, gotta watch one. out. These one one ones have just been with punishing everything and anything, Ragnarok. So it's such a quick, fast button to use. Very hit confirmable too, but gets Ooh. that crushing blow on the grab. And right, rolls in for the low. The slow overhead, mistimed and punished. Nicholas. Good stuff from both of them. A clinic when it comes to playing Nightwolf. This is kind of what I mean though. You would never guess the set has finished just by looking at them. Mm -mm. Like, that's kind of my point. We're, we're, we're them playing each other in tournament feels like something they have to do because the tournament means they must do it so they can get to the next matches so they can both try and make top two. There's just, it, it's, it's such a bizarre situation that they play each other and they bring forward the gameplay like we just saw there. I mean, a Nightwolf mirror for crying out loud. You would think they're just messing around, mm -hmm. but then both of them are playing an insanely good Nightwolf with optimized combos with a lot of well-placed buttons, a lot of amazing reads on the armor breaker, a lot of situational armor breaks, like stuff that suggests, yeah, they've played Nightwolf a few times before, but then when the match is over, I didn't even see a handshake. No. It was, all right, we're done, cool. And they just get off the stage and they wait until they get to play someone else. And it was like I said, the, the layers they're willing to go through, the amplified command grab for the extra hit advantage, the empty jump, flawless block attempt, because you knew you were going to wake up with a button. Just crazy. Well, right. The last hope is one of these two. Euphoring and King Gambler. Now, I'm going to ask you, unbiased. Sure. Who do you favor out of these two? Who do you reckon as a has that push chance, you know, to take on the twins, to try and conquer that mountain that no one has been able to conquer yet. Euphoring had a great showing in his last match. The character adaptation was definitely on point. But there's something to be said for Gambler and just being a steamroller through this bracket. So I have to give it to Gambler. I'm going to gamble on him again. 
got to say. Personally, I agree with you. By all means, I, I would love to be proven wrong because Euphoring has already done so well to reach top four. But I was talking to people. I was talking to people yesterday during the pool play. And you talk about the tournament, you talk about favorites. Obviously, everyone's talking about the twins because everyone's trying to take them out. And people would often say their money was on King Gambler. Of all the people that people have been, of all the players that people have been mentioning, most have often said to me that if anyone can do it, Gambler can. Because character choice, skill level, and especially recently, the tear that King Gambler has been on in the online realm. And Gambler has been able to consistently prove that online and offline are not really different at all to him. It, it does not hinder his gameplay. Now, hang on a minute. I have been told this is a button check, but the headphones have gone on and Joker has been selected. Interesting choice. Now, I would, I would not be surprised if he does have a great Joker ready for the Sub-Zero. But to what you mentioned earlier, I'd like to give an extra shout out then to NRS and Warner Brothers for giving such a fantastic netcode that allows us to have all these online events and competitions that mean we can come offline and it's not that much different. That patch hit with Mortal Kombat XL and we never looked back. You would never believe that the early days of Netherrealm competitive competition, you know, the delay based netcode. MKX comes out after a year, they work some magic. You know, I, I, I don't know how long it took them, of course. I don't want to speak on behalf of them in any way. But whatever they did, it was a night and day difference. And from that point on, the online tournament space just got flipped on its head. Mm -hmm. And now MK11 has had so many. And again, I want to use this opportunity to shout out the community. Those of you watching at home right now, there are so many active Six. members in the Mortal Kombat 11 scene that run exhibitions, that run tournaments, that... It's Do weak. all kinds of stuff. You every It doesn't matter what day of the week, if you hop on Twitch, somebody is hosting something, and you love to see it. Rips Arena, the Coliseum, so many more. Even Sony. Sony themselves do uh, the occasional fight nights with various games, and Mortal Kombat has often been a part of that lineup. There's uh, a lot of online support, and it has allowed these players to grind and grind and grind, where offline comes around, you're better than ever. We're good to go, and oh, you know who's term. also good to go? Terminator. So Terminator and Sub Zero. Who will get mixed first? There will be no neutral here. <laughs> there will be mix and only mix-ups. Whose dome will be blessed? Oh, yep. okay. That answers that question. Well, <laughs> it's, it's, it's been King Gambler every time, mate. You've never been wrong. Uh, empty hop into the ground. Great tech from Euphoring. Now boxed in, goes for the command grab and gets punished. This is not a great start. Rising ice combos, of course, hit hard, but drops it. Great anti air, MK9 anti airs on deck. Yeah, Euphoring's Terminator has just simply put, not had the chance to exist yet. No. Uh, we, we saw it earlier in the tournament, that one game of Terminator where basically nothing works. The whole match was a disaster. Hopefully that does not happen again. There's an element here of euphoring. A huge part of the mix-up has been the Albi backbreaker. Using it raw. There you go. What kind of Terminator mix-ups do you want? You know, some players favor the overhead low. Some players love adding the threat of the command grab. And yes, standing one. No fear from King Gambler. And remember, folks, this is to get into losers finals. This is for top three minimum. And now Gambler is just continuing to push. Mix up after mix up. The jump in didn't manage to hit its mark. And the recovery frames on that Albi backbreaker is so long. I think we saw one successful command grab in that entire match. Gambler had the read on everything. And those reads are so favorable especially in the side of Sub-Zero, the damage he's going to get from those full jump-ins, especially in the corner, that's a different beast entirely. And I would not be surprised if this is maybe the last time we see Terminator from Euphoring, because the two times it's been picked, it has been a disaster. Mm -hmm. Just nothing's worked. No mix-up has, con has connected. You've been jumped in on a million times. We're likely going to change here. But yeah. who? 
Let's see, is Scorpion Baraka? Noob Cybot? I can only assume we're maybe either looking to hit hard, maybe get a punish. Is the Cabal going to be enough? Interesting. Kano could mix in return, but there's some serious thought going into this, and for good reason. Ah, right, taking it back to the early days. Interesting. There's one thing I always heard from players is that Sub-Zero players often did not like fighting a Scud shot Aaron Black. I'd, I'd, I'd heard that for years, pretty much almost day one, really. As long as these two characters were around with Scud shot, Sub-Zero players didn't like the matchup. So we'll see if there's some, some logic to that in 2023. Oh, Have yeah. things changed? I mean, I'll be honest, I kind of forgot Aaron Black existed. I feel like I haven't seen him in the tournament setting in such a long time. He's definitely fallen off in favor, isn't he? All right. However. The back two is daggers. Uh, you can't get too cute with your pressure, though. You can stagger things all day, every day, but if you start to leave too many gaps, you're giving one opening to a talented Sub-Zero player. You're kind of asking for trouble. Absolutely. Shouts to Primal Rage in the background, by the way. <laughs> shouts to Combo Breaker for a wonderful Primal Rage tournament yesterday. And shouts to Mustard, who I hate, for beating <laughs> me in Grand Finals. Anyway, back to this lovely corner combo and a fantastic breaker. Right, you Yeah, we saw the acid on the ground for all of a second before King Diamond was able to jump over it and get a full jump in combo. But Euphoring potentially could get something going here. He does have Fatable on deck, and Aaron Black, of course, in the end game becomes very dangerous. Doesn't have the meter to turn it into 18%, though, sadly. Goes in for the immediate button. Oh no, mistake away. Overhead, commits to it. Gambler lets it rock and pays the price. Now, okay, round one. U4 in. Good stuff weathering there. All right, goes for the dropkick. Tries to meter burn it. Interesting there. May have been a mistimed button or read. Gambler is trying to squeeze out every ounce of damage, but it is sadly resulting in the final hit being dropped. And that final one, two, four, that's, that's what lets you keep it going afterwards, even if you don't spend the KB. So then we've seen a interesting last few seconds here with Gambler throwing you throwing out of the corner constantly. I can only imagine with the health that's left. Perhaps doesn't value the corner as much in this round. I guess we'll see if that pays off in a minute because you fouring. Whoa, hang on a minute. We're mixing it up. You fouring has just been tricky all top eight long. Forward throw. Disrespectful. Oy, watch the cans. Mm. People are making a damn mess down there. Delayed back three. Wonderful defense there from Euphoring. The command grab, and there's Meter. That's the game. 1-1. One, one. He got it. So disrespectful to just throw your opponent on the ground and then just drop a stick of dynamite on them. Someone needs to teach Aaron Black some manners. All right, so now oh. we're one game apiece, immediately gets hit by the overhead into the hits, ice ball, down two, that's enough to break away. Whoa, the one thing Aaron Black has, it's still those good low pokes, those thoroughly annoying low pokes. You put the command grab on top of it. Very rather scary game to deal with. Euphoring, has to watch out here, Gambler. Life lead, low poke into slide, I mean, we are starting to let out some of the unpredictable stuff here. Instant jump in and the down two, just in case you try and break. Chase down with the one two, not enough to finish the job, but anything will do it in that case. Jump kick, and now the subway. Best stage in Mortal Kombat, by the way. And the best music. And one of the better stage fatalities. Oh, I love it. Armageddon, MK9, MK3, take your pick. All right, overhead putting in work for Gambler. Rising ice combo, 34%. Tries to chase the roll down just a little out of range and gets caught by the grab again. Spend a little extra meter. Yeah, that down four, the down three, they have been rather key to allowing Euphoring to open up this offense, to be tricky, to, to not really allow Sub-Zero to just constantly do exactly what he wants. You have a, you have a down four that can contest with Sub-Zeros, which just makes it a bit harder for him to do what he wants to do. However, there's a throw. So both players even up here on life just about, but then gets caught with a clean jump in, full combo. Breakaway, yep, into the down two. And timed the back three meaty perfectly. And with there being no delayed wake up there, that was going to be a guaranteed victory. Now, have we rematched or have we gone back? Looks like we've gone back. Is this a character change or is this just breathing space? 
final chance. There's no turning back in Euphoring's position. I, I mean, I would expect the Cabal, but Gambler's been on point with his anti airs all top eight. He has been. And this is Gambler. Like I said, it's when you're changing to other characters, you need to make sure that pick that you swap to has some kind of edge. You need to have something that you can just... Something's got to stand out. Mm -hmm. Looks like we're going to the classic Kano pick. Custom variation, as expected. Betting it all on the mix-ups. More about pressure and chipping away piece by piece for Kano. You get those full combos, you get the knockdown. If you're able to get the acid burn on deck, the chemical. But who's going to be able to do it better if they establish a corner presence? It's like that magic word we've been saying all <laughs> series long. Who's going to get the momentum? King Gambler only needs one game here. Lovely little anti-air and a fantastic way to start this match off. The dash in grab. Right, trying to contest with the knife tosses. Not a good trade. Tries to use the bio pool just out of range. Goes for the low. I mean, I'm pretty sure that bio pool has a 13 frame startup, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. So for a special move with that range, startup speed like that is very, very scary. Speaking of which, overhead's kind of scary too, as there's a full combo now. And so much damage is dealt. By the time you've broken, you've taken 30%. That's why Rising Ice Sub-Zero is so dangerous. Yeah, a character you wouldn't normally fear damage from as much in the mid-screen area now has access to damage anywhere on the screen. Gets caught by the low. Right. Rising Ice. Oh, that's it. Yeah. That is it. And that is why Rising Ice is so scary mid-screen. It just explodes the damage potential. Match point for King Gambler. All right. And again, I'm not, I'm not going to be afraid to try to jump at this man. He has anti-aired everything with that standing one. And it has been characters that can sometimes have access to other jump changes I suppose and the Kano ball is certainly one of them and the buttons they're whiffing left right and center gambler are we gonna go one two four yeah why not spend it mate 15% left to go and it'll be top three territory for gambler back dashes the command grab doesn't get the punish great throw tech from you foring he's not trying to do anything to slow gambler down but it's it's looking grim I right, guess the command grab the first step of many if this comeback is going to turn into anything. Lovely confirm. I was worried that Euphoring wasn't really confirming that forward one string before. It's now or never, though. You've got to make sure everything counts. The pressure. Wait a minute. Come Wait on, a grab. minute. Oh, the tech. Oh. No! So close, but the poke war eventually is going to favor that sub-zero and send King Gambler into losers' finals. Where, right. The final challenge is about to begin, and it's a two-parter. What a task to ask of somebody to beat one and then beat the twin after that. But so far, if anyone can do it, potentially it could be Gambler. Luckily, he is going to have some time to think about it because we're going to take a short break here, check out some sponsors. We'll be back with more Mortal Kombat 11 in this top eight here soon. There's plenty more Combo Breaker 2023 action coming at you on the way. But first, let's take a quick commercial break. If you want to add to your Combo Breaker merch legacy collection, don't forget to head over to the Combo Breaker shop to check out all the amazing merch. Get yours before they run out. And then there were three. It's been a wonderful tournament this weekend here for Mortal Kombat 11 at Combo Breaker 2023, but only three players are remaining. King Gambler and the twins from Chile. It's going to be Nicholas and Scorpion Prox. <sighs> we said at the start, King Gambler's final challenge has begun, and we said it's a two-parter. Mm -hmm. They play so similar. Someone in the chat mentioned, I, I didn't see the name, it was going by quick. It, it's kind of like if you're a gambler, it's like if you beat the boss in a game and you think the credits are going to roll, but then a second health bar pops up, and you've got to do it all over again. And it somehow it's even harder. It is very similar to that situation because they play so similar. You, the, the, player, the, the, the brother you have to fight in losers' finals is merely part one. And then 
one of them is ultimately going to be playing a little bit better, hence the winner's bracket or loser's bracket. So you've won the loser's finals against someone, but then you've got to fight the brother who's doing a bit better. Yeah. Different frame data, you know? Maybe a little bit more health on that health bar. Yeah. Either way, it's time to see if the last hope for North America can get the job done. So the buttons have been checked, the moves have been selected. They are going right into this match. Teach my arms. And I can't wait to see. I do not recall we have not seen the Kotal Khan all top eight long, but that time has changed. And uh, well, see for yourself, I suppose. King Gambler is gonna look to play this rock solid. Yeah, stops him with the standing one, but Kotal answering back immediately with the command grab already glowing a little bit. Kotal's jockeying for position here. Kotal with such a great wave dash and a threat up close. Everything hurts. Oh, everything's working out so far as well, Ragnarok. You have to watch out here, Kotal Khan. He hits incredibly hard and so many potential command grab mixes at all of these ranges. It's one of those elements that King Gambler is going to have to permanently be worried about. And the speed of that up too just makes the flawless block game immaculate. And that's something we haven't even had to look at yet. The twins and their flawless blocks are, are some of the scariest we've ever seen ever. I mean, we saw it. He had Gambler fighting for his life in the corner. And the second he was able to escape, he gets put right back in the anti-air flawless block up two. Oh. That's how you know the respect is being shown, or at least you think it has. Empty jump into command grab. Looks for the down two. Doesn't quite manage to land it here. And there's the discus. Reversal slide. I will admit, though, it seemed a little bit desperate from King Gambler. That could have been so catastrophically wrong. The one, one I mean, the one two. He's got to be expecting a command grab off one of these at some point, and he just hasn't done it yet. But when's he going to pull the trigger? I mean, he's not going to get a chance to, because this is probably going to do it here. And it's uh, it's uh, it's one of those things. Do you do something so crazy that no one would think you can or that you would do it just to try to throw them off their game? There are many potential ways to try and make this happen. You know, if you're able to, well, they sometimes say, you know, if someone's playing like a computer. Sometimes something is just the unexpected. Not for an entire game, of course, but just there needs to be this element of unpredictability. If they're just so used to every matchup, every character, King Gambler here is just not able to find an inch into this match. And there's the confirm. Even more damage incoming. And once again, Gambler back to the corner. Yeah, and this time he walked himself into the corner at the start of the match, and he is paying for it right now, trying to stay, try to use the big boot, but gets interrupted immediately. Kotal Khan, I know somewhere out there, a certain mustachioed man is praising the sun. Yeah, you know why? Because Aquaman no doubt would have noticed it just as much as we did. You could have flawless blocked that forward four. You whiff punished it with one, two. It's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. All right, side switching throw. Gambler, an opportunity. Not pressuring in the corner, though. Oh, counter hit. I was going to say, I like the fact that we're keeping the fight mid-screen because if Gambler can avoid the corner, you're avoiding potential disaster here. But I'm, I'm scared. Walking himself back in, and he's whiffing. He whiffed the back three, and Scorpion Rock's taking full advantage, keeping it safe with the Amplify on the discus. Quick pokes. And then jump in, and excellent punish from Gambler. He's going to get a chance to build a little bit of momentum here. Great damage, not just to spend the crush blow, and then immediately just takes his turn back, commanding lead in this round. Good choice not to amplify there. Kotal Khan players, you know, they'll go, oh, the big jump in that at the air did not work, and that will be meter spent along with the fatal blow now. It is going to do tons of damage. There's an element of thinking, is it going to kill? It's sub zero. It's hard to disagree. But in this case, Kotal Khan has the extra health. Kotal Khan has the extra health. <laughs> Most characters would be dead right now. No. 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 Kotal Khan and the health. Big body health. Oh. Oh, I felt that. Everyone felt that. Kotal Khan and his ability to just take approximately maybe 5% more of a beating than everyone else. 
And that, that will break. That can break a player, that situation. Gambler, there's, there's no wonder we're sitting here and we're just thinking. We have to give this some serious thought and it's reset, right? If we went straight into restart match after that, your opponent has everything on their side. Mm -hmm. We have to just restabilize, slow down, go back into what could be King Gambler's final match of this tournament. And so I was like, what do you do? Because Skirbrox has had such a commanding lead in these games so far. If you're a gambler, what, what's, what are you going to try to throw out here? And right there, Ball's blocked up to punishing the poke attempt, gets whiff punished, put in the corner, having to deal with Kotal Khan and Kotal Khan things. It's, it's an opposite situation. Gambler has spent this entire top eight in a lot of these matches being the one in the driver's seat, and he's kind of dictating the pace of the match. We're now fighting against Scorpion Prox, who is setting you up at a range to press a button, he's with punishing you. He's the one going for the jumps. He's got the advancing mids. The role has simply been reversed here, and Scorpion Prox is just playing a lot faster. Now here comes Gambler, again, just clipped by that advancing mid. The down three to steal the turn, not looking to confirm, just letting it rock. It just, it screams doubt. So he gets so afraid up close. Is he going to go for the command grab and bring a quick breakaway, avoiding the ice ball? Gamble with the jump. There in. we go. And that will be the round. Yeah, that smart. Will be the round. Smart not to spend the fatal blow there. Realize he didn't have to. There was no meter to break away. And that's one more resource he has going into this round. You right. can even see it. Scorpion Prox wave dashing at a range where a button might happen and then instantly back dashing. That is, that is just a trap being set. Absolutely. All right. Gets him with the overhead. He's going to put Scorbrox in the corner and see if he can make something happen. All right. Now, that one, two, four making a lot more sense. The corner positioning, the discus to fight our way out, commits to the whole string and punishes the grab. Lovely choice, though, Gambler. What are we going to get from this? Challenging you to press a button, but no one home yet. The one, two. Looking for the down four plus frames. Good trade. That trade favors Gambler, and so does that jump in. And that's the down two. By all means, should be the end of it and will be a restart match. Energy from the crowd. It's needed. This is this is the last hope of North America, and if they don't rally behind him now, they won't have another chance. Absolutely walking into another potential Nightwolf mirror, but Gambler now on the board, down 2-1. Gets him with another overhead. So much more confidence from Gambler right now, fighting back, asserting himself, and not sort of playing, I don't want to say afraid, because it certainly wasn't that, but a full combo now from Scorpion Prox. Meter to spend, and no doubt we'll spend it to keep the corner positioning. All right, quick down one check. Tries to jump back, but gets caught by Gambler, and meets him in the air, full combo conversion, spend another bar, keep him in the corner, but of course Gambler now with the fatal blow option, but gets oh, in the sunlight. And unfortunately, damage over time does it. Scorpion Prox now on the verge of getting the run back against Nicholas. One of the truest set, set mate, checkmate. <laughs> oh my good Lord, I'll get through this, I promise. <laughs> Situations in the whole game is that light ray. I want to hate on it, but I also played Scarecrow. You know what, that's really true. <laughs> I was about to say, who'd you play in MKX, but I know the answer to that question. Yeah, that too. <laughs> and he has standing one. Score! Oh! Scorpion Frogs just swinging with the uppercut. A look of frustration potentially there from Gambler. And that will be the end of the journey for the last hope for the American audience. I mean, you said it yourself. Gambler set the pace on all of his matches throughout this top eight, and it's like the roles were completely reversed here. He was playing from the back foot, and he never really got a chance to get much started. It was shut down at every turn. But then on the opposite end of that, the difference was the game that Gambler won, and then the subsequent round that happened, more confidence, more assertiveness. And I know it's, it's, it's a much more complicated matter than just be more confident lol mm -hmm. but in that instance when he was able to actually fight back and do his thing it just looked a lot more a lot more ideal for him i yeah. suppose but i'm sure it's not gonna be the last time that those two are gonna meet in bracket but now of course we have well we all kind of called it at 
potentially the beginning. It was a possible outcome. Nicholas versus Scorpion Prox in grand final. So it, only question remains now is who are we going to see? We saw Nightwolf Mirror earlier. I mean, it could be anybody. They could consider their Nightwolf Mirror unfinished business, and we could go straight back into that, but we have the potential of, of more games to work with in that one if there is a reset that occurs. Or we could just go into a fresh new set, and you sometimes get the impression, and again, I don't want to be speaking on behalf of them, <clears throat> but when, when siblings are in the same tournament in fighting games, one thing that seems to be so common is that when you're both in this instance, it's kind of, sometimes it can be considered a victory for you that you've even made it here. The fact that you're both in grand finals, you've both topped the tournament, right? You are, you are at the top of this bracket, both of you together. But when you practice together and when you train together and when you travel together sure. and you end up with that result, the actual winner of the tournament sometimes it's not what you think about as siblings. Mm -hmm. And I, I say this from complete experience because <clears throat> this is this is now the second twin grand final at Combo Breaker <laughs> this year. <laughs> um, when Mustard and myself were playing yesterday, it, it was one of those things of, yeah, of, obviously it was a different game, but our goal was to both do as well as we can together. We were both in this exact same situation and I'm not talking on behalf of Mustard, but I'm definitely talking on behalf of myself. It felt like the job was done before we even played that Grand Finals. Don't get me wrong, I wanted to win, and so did Mustard. But the fact that we were both there was almost enough. Mm -hmm. And I get that impression from these two every time I watch them play, because there's just... <laughs> it sounds really stupid, but it's the lack of excitement from them. It's the, it's the lack of, of hype in their demeanor, where it's like, now they're just getting this tournament done, their mission is accomplished. They are at the top, and there's no taking that away. It's the very long way of me putting a point I probably could have said in two minutes. No, I agree. I agree with your assessment. Although, you know, you're here, they're there. Like, I'm surrounded by all these twins. I want a twin now. I'm getting twin envy. Having a twin in competitive fighting games, like, should be banned. <laughs> it's really unfair if you think about it. It is an unfair advantage. I have plenty of lookalikes out there, but no, there's there's but one. Like the Highlander, there's only one Ragnarok. <laughs> what a movie. Right. May have been aging myself a bit with that reference. We'll see who gets it in the chat as we wait and see exactly who we're going to get in this grand finals match. Looking like a fresh start, if you ask me, because I can see two entirely different characters. Spawn has already been selected. See, I, I thought we were going to get Baraka for a second. I got a little excited, but hopes were raised and dashed in the span of five seconds. Well, now it doesn't seem likely we're having a Nightwolf mirror. This potential character roster has just been blown wide open. This could be genuinely anyone and we have a potential reset to get through and the rest of this tournament two legends in the making and uh, I guarantee as we go through Mortal Kombat 11 and we are mere months away from entering that new chapter of Mortal Kombat 1 these two players in particular are going to be right at the top of everyone's list I mean I'm gonna I'm gonna be looking out for them. absolutely can't wait to see what they do it seems to be a little bit of indecisiveness here, but like you mentioned earlier, when you play against somebody all day, every day, who do you pick against them in tournament if you're trying to throw them off their game? Or can you throw them off their game? The Joker. Ah, so jumping Jester. Gotcha. And this will be a button check going into this. I can only assume they're going to restart match because why go through all that to pick your character and the moves to like only go back and then pick someone else? To psych someone out, catch up. Oh, you that, that thought that would have worked on me. <laughs> Consider me fooled. But this is going to be grand finals of Combo Breaker 2023. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Thank you very much to the staff, the production.
everyone running the show and making this wonderful tournament possible. For Mortal Kombat 11, it comes now down to two fantastic, young, talented players. Nicholas, Scorpion Prox. I always laugh that Joker finds some guy in a wheelchair and then throws him out of the wheelchair at the opponent. And then uh, half a second later, finds another one. Looks like these buttons should be okay. I can't tell. I generally can't tell. Nope. We'll just check him real quick. The wave dash button is working. It has been selected. Wait, I think they did. Did they go back to fight or select? They did. <laughs> Picking all <laughs> these moves and going back to character select. You mixed me up, you two. You mixed me up good. I hyped up the grand finals and everything. Right. Now we're back to character select. Do the plug over again, Ketchup. Start uh, from the beginning. Oh, I can't remember <laughs> what I said. Help. Help me out. Okay, well, the guessing game of the characters the has resumed. Ah, the Joker and Johnny Cage. You cannot see that on stream yet, but they are now picking their, their characters for realsies, no take backs. And it looks like it's going to be the Joker. I think maybe the same variation. I'll have to double check. But it's Johnny Cage as the opponent. Car on ship. Mm. One of my favorite stages in the game. Oh, this game has some fantastic stages. It has all led up to this point. Who's going to be the better brother of the day? Take that final MK11 Combo Breaker Championship. Right. We're starting off strong. Looking for that forward three, of which we confirm into Nut Punch as always. All right, goes for Rising Star. Keeping it safe. Good false block, anti-air, and gets the grab. Now, this is more reminiscent of the matches between these two that I'm familiar with, which is, oh, lovely pickup. Doesn't get the, oh, misses the forward two, and he gets punished for it. However, no amplify on the Nut Punch. That surely could have been much more than it was, leaving damage on the table. Good trade there. All right, nice block on the elbow players. Kind of just taking their time with this one, but evened up on health. Flawless blocks everywhere. A lot of these individual buttons are scary game to play. Let's not forget these are the only two characters in the roster that are able to cancel their fatal blow. So, of course, Joker gets the crushing blow on his grab when he cancels it. Such a threat up close. The character already has good buttons. I really appreciate the use of that. Oh, the Ooh. flawless block! What on earth was that? that was we got to watch that back in slow motion. I have no idea what just happened there. Now, the side switching throw. That is not going to be the end of the round. Projectile game is strong. Seven seconds on the clock. The walk under. Oh, the hesitation and this time the dash cancel into the forward one is going to do it. Nicholas, round one. It's such a scary thing when Joker's up close to you with that fatal blow because you don't know what he's going to go after. Will he just let it rip? Will he cancel it? If he cancels it, he's going to pressure, go for the grab. So many things to think about, but think about this. Hook to the face, crushing blow, 24%. Great flawless block in return. Another flawless block. Huge part of fighting the Joker is getting used to just flawless blocking that back forward four. It became so much more common later down the line. It just shuts down that potential pressure. There's the confirm, though. No breaker for Scorpion Prox. There's the combo we were looking for. 34% count it. The down falls in a low profile, that jump in. No punish there for Scorpion Prox as Nicholas. It'll be quite comfortable. And another beautiful flawless block up, too. Absolutely. These two may be the best flawless blockers I've seen of the competition. Oh, maybe it, oh, that's it! That's gonna be the game. Here comes the down two. 1% left. Wait a minute. The cancel, no crushing blow. It's the Joker that's got that. Oh, that was <laughs> unnecessary. You didn't have to do that. Nope, it's the danger. You go for the grab at the end game and get hit with the chin checker. We're running it back. See, at this point, the, the twins that I was familiar with were kind of changing every game. 
However, in this instance, it looks very much like the confidence is there in that Johnny Cage. And to be fair, was pretty close. There's the confirm, though. 32%. Yeah, very... Oh, the launch of this Joker is looking disgusting! Very strong star from Nicholas right now. Hascorn Prox basically almost at death's door and lets the fatal blow rip early. That... I mean, I don't want to say that must have been a mistake, but that... That's a... Hmm. It looked unintentional to me. Using a fatal blow there when there is so much of a comeback to make, you've lost the ability to dash cancel for the rest of the game. And yeah. that is a massive, massive thing to lose when your opponent has just won that round from you and they have the only round in the game so far. Scorpion Proc, sadly, has given himself a lot more work to do than necessary so far. All right, speaking of which, though, here's the start. The breakaway forced. Pressure and momentum on Scorpion's side. There's the forward three. Okay, who needs a fatal blow? Yeah, the complete opposite of how the last game went. Now Scorpion Prox in the driver's seat, shut down the cancel immediately, and now basically has Nicholas fighting to just stay alive in the round. All right, Rising Star keeping it safe. There's the confirm, the classic stuff. Cancel into the launcher. Right, 40%. high damage knockdown. It's the jumping jester. Adds so much more damage than you expect. Dash in. Down one, maybe trying to steal a turn. The forward one into good patience. Rising star from Scorpion Prox. Just trying to get that extra final little hit here. But here's the corner pressure. A big jump in. Last breath. You've got to watch out for it. Lovely throw tech. Oh, the confirm! Oh, that whole <laughs> thing. I know the round didn't go his way, but that whole thing was, when do you, when could you break there? Right. Could you even break? Go there? ahead and break, I dare you. All right, good false block and a punish for it. Does No meter. Yeah, no meter. No meter to turn that into anything significant. The forward three on its own. Scorpion Prox did not want to overcommit to that one. Down one, down four, that's a Johnny Cage classic. Lovely projectile to stop the advance here. Fighting his way out of the corner piece by piece. There is a lot of patience and respect here. A trade that will favor Scorpion Prox. Pushes Nicholas further into the mid-screen. And there's the confirm on the low. So it comes up off all his defensive meter and hits him with the last hit of the string. Interesting. Uh, looking like this could go to 1-1 at this rate. Oh, the sweep's fantastic as well. This has been a wonderful round. Oh, the flawless block. Oh, that's a message and a half to send. Blowing up the cancel with a flawless block launcher. Says, hey, 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 don't get too comfortable now. Just back it off and throwing those force balls. Good idea here. The double down two. Trying yeah. to prevent that breakaway. Ooh, not sure if that was... If that was intentional, it was a bold move. Yeah, good answer. Doesn't get a whole lot off of it. Gets really false block up two. And interesting back and forth here from both of them. That's a huge catch. Now there will be a breaker available. Is it going to get spent? Oh! I've never seen that combo in my life. If that down two connected, that would have won the round. Yeah, just a hair out of range. That's the thing you really used to think about Joker's down two. It seems to cover such a wide area in front and above him. All right, a round on the board here for Nicholas. We're just playing at that range. I dare you to press a button so I can hit you with my stick. Oh, there it is. All right, so Lincoln Messis gets hit with the Batman doll. Such a disrespectful move. Turn your arch enemy into an item that you use in your offense. A nice safe ender. A good combo ender there, actually, to keep that mid-screen. Almost jump distance. Now a confirm has been landed here. We're going to amplify just to get a bit extra. Push towards this corner. The dash in, a breakaway. The confidence is here. But there's that flawless block again. It has been wonderful every single time so far. And there's the punish. No last breath either. One round apiece here. And remember, Nicholas is the one in winner's bracket. Nicholas only has to win this three out of five to win the tournament. Scorpion Prox has to win this set just to reset and start again. Do it all over a second time, but so far, great start here from Scorpion Prox. Gets the grab. And both, both players doing a very good job of stopping the momentum of the other. 
and checking a lot of the, right there. You try to move in, and he checks you immediately for it. Ooh. Huge chunk of damage, and now once more corner positioning. A deep jump kick. No button's going to get pressed there, so that forward one simply on block. Lovely with punish, and actually the breakers are going to come out too far away for a down two, so a bit more extra breathing space for Nicholas. But how long is it going to last? The down one's trade. A neutral jump into flawless block, into another flawless block, into another <laughs> flawless block, into a shadow kick! And the best flawless block players. In the business. In the business. That's a whip. Both players, no punish there. Got with a down one rising star. Classic Johnny Cage. Moving in slowly, goes for the option, good block, and neutral jump trying to bait the forward advancement. No dice, but gets the great combo. 36%. Damn, Joker hurts so hard, but then gets caught immediately with the whiff punish from Scorpion Fox. Ready for the confirm as well. A Shadow Kick Ender. There wasn't any meter to get anything else significant, so we'll take that damage for what it is. Speaking of damage, there's about to be a considerable amount here. No, drops the forward two, and that allows Scorpion Prox to turn things round. That really should have been the round for Nicholas, but a tragic combo drop right there. So you definitely hate to see. All right, but next round, Scorpion Prox one on the board already. All right, good opener. An excellent corner carry now sitting in there. Joker, such a dangerous character when he has you corners because of the long range his normals cover. 2-1, low profile for Johnny Cage standing one. Don't see that every day. Interesting. What you do see every day is uh, that Joker move as we're going to get another confirmed. Lovely with punish once more. So really no meter, unfortunately. Can't get a whole lot off of it. Right. A lot of sweeps shown in this match so far. Scorpion Prox is able to win this round, then it's going to be a very, very different story. We might even see an entirely new set of characters. Would not be surprised. Oh, armor break! And, I mean, the pause is done. Whether or not they were second-guessing it or not, that the pause was done, and that game is now over. Yeah. And it looks like we're going back to character select. A reset has taken place, and we could have two new characters. Now, how deep in the bag do you have to go? What character could you block? Because he was there. The, the Raiden, or not Raiden, the Joker and Johnny match was going very back and forth. Could have been anyone's game. Do you switch off of that to try something new, or do you stay with what so far has worked? Oh, well, I can tell you one thing: it's not the Joker. It's going back to Fujin, and in this instance. I am not so used to watching them play their, I guess you could say, quote unquote, mains. Mm -hmm. I, they rarely play Cabal versus each other. I haven't seen the Fujin often. At least in these American offline majors. But this is the time. We're going all serious with one of the big hitters. As now Johnny Cage on the other side. I mean, the confidence clearly must be there. Absolutely. Did a great job with the Cage, but now I have to deal with Fujin and the just insane amount of movement options he has and the great whiff punishing. All right, both players dog for position here. Ducks the high, doesn't get a punish. Great anti -air, forces the breakaway. Back one staggers into the push. And he gets caught whiffing again. Fujin's such a dangerous character to whiff on because he has so many buttons to cover different ranges. Now, sadly, there was a combo drop there, so we are going to leave some damage on the table, but it's going to make a much more interesting neutral. Fujin and just the sheer explosiveness of what he can do in a match. With punish again, and that kind of has been a serious problem for Nicholas. Scorpion Prox, something about the cage, whether it's his application of the down four, the low pokes, maybe just sheer movement. He is getting Nicholas to whiff constantly. And that up two, that up two has been <laughs> the one. Ooh, almost got the whip punch on the slide. Good flawless block and return. Text the throw. Good stuff. It's just every time Nicholas almost assumes that Scorpion Prox is going to move into something. Scorpion's already taken a slight step back, and he's ready for the forward three to punish it. Mm -hmm. He 
even on that forward three, we didn't see a, a punish on that. But the Fujin slide, we almost saw Cage get big damage. Now there's that. Oh, looking for it again. Yeah, something they both do so well is baiting something out of the opponent by wave dashing in and then taking a step backwards, looking for that button to potentially whip punish. Alright, plays with the wind wall. Good answer with the shadow kick. Jump clean over, gets the solid jump in with punish, forces another breakaway. I have to say, oh, looking for it again. Just out of range. Would have been shades of how the set itself got reset. And now we're looking for the extra projectiles and we're spending every ounce of resources on it. Walking backwards now, we're gonna have to show some respect. The down three and there's the wind push. That was very nearly a game one there for Scorpion, but sadly that fatal blow did not hit its mark. Absolutely. Went down to 17 seconds on the clock. These twins not afraid to take their time and run the clock down if need be. Time is yet another resource. Speaking of which, it's so common that there's always a breaker available. Their defensive meter management, the prioritization of the breakaway, more important than anything. They almost never wake up attack. <laughs> they almost never wake up attack. It's wake up flawless block or nothing. Both are about evened up on life here. Still short of defense meter from both of them. Quick down one on wake up. All right, right the jumps in. No flawless block there. Well, the Fusion is certainly providing a closer experience. Very, very close. And now that projectile, in some ways, has kind of done Nicholas a favor because now it has given him access to Fatal Blow. And any simple confirm, Fujin's Fatal Blow does a ton of damage. Absolutely. Very dangerous throw in the cave tries. Walk up, does nothing. With the throw into the down two crushing blow, and that will seal the first game of this grand finals reset. We waste no time. We waste no time going into a restart match. Oh, what? Well, I would say punish, but that was counter hit, not a punish. Right. Ooh, Good answer, and then gets the clean jump in. 26% stops the jump with a standing one. Oh and my good lord, that 1-2-1 one, one has been a pain in the backside. Scorpion Prox. Feel like we've just turned a dial up. Right. How Scorpion Prox has approached this round. Just all out offense and aggression. However, a twist of fate perhaps as Nicholas now, the one in return, pushing towards the corner. Big jump in. Defense on the rising star that connected that would have been the end of the round instead the one two one shows its head Again a scorpion prox one round up on the board wins this next round two zero and it looks like the punish! Punishes have been on point for the prox all day the Nicholas waking up gets the full conversion almost like it was gonna drop out there, but No dice and now running away with this round, but nothing has been saved because both players seem to have been taking turns Moving in with the force balls. Kind of staying at a mid long range. Wave dashes in, goes for the load. No dice. Flawless block again. Solid 24%. Getting that damage off and up to anytime you want. That's impressive in its own right. Speaking of which, oh, but drops the basic combo. I feel like there might have been a break there from Nicholas anyway, but even getting that resource out from your opponent near the end of a round, important by itself. Another fatal blow. Oh, KB! I didn't even know he had gotten that loaded yet. The ability to just manage them that way. That's one of the scarier things I think about a good Fujin player is remembering the three distances. Yep. And good stuff on the flawless block. And wow, straight up kicks to the face. Did a great job flawless blocking those projectiles there to mitigate the chip damage he would have otherwise taken. I like that early standing one. I, I feel like there was a strong element there to just try and anti-air. Well, the defense on the one-two-one. One. Good blocks there from Nicholas. That had been causing him a ton of bother before. Punish there, though, on the shadow kick. Able to deal with it. Looking for another whiff punish. Just make it two. May as well go for a third at this rate. Lovely yeah. flawless block. A return flawless block. Anything you can do, I can do better. And look at that, look at that. Just trying to bait some type of button out there. Ready for it. Slides underneath the force ball. Doesn't get the punish in time, though. Get back okay. down here. Wow. All 
Batman back one staggers again. Up with the wind wall, puts him back full screen. Wave dash is in quickly. The whole string didn't connect, but truthfully, didn't really feel like it needed to. That was a good 20% just there. Reverse throw. Haven't seen a lot of throws come out there. Mm -mm. Now Fatable on deck, of course, now he's got the Fatal Blow cancel available for him up close and personal. And oh, the counter hit though, might not have the chance! That was a scary situation. Matt, the environment interaction made that entire string whiff, but he just was not able to reach it in time to get a forward three, which could have been a counter, which could have been damage, could have even been the round. But no, the 1-1. One, one. Got to move on ahead, eating these force balls to the face. Tries to go for the entire. Doesn't quite get it, and the armor break on the win kick. Good stuff from Nicholas. All right. Corner positioning. Oh, I say, as it's instantly, instantly turned on its head. And the forward three begins. A jump in now from Scorpion Prox into another wonderful. How many of these are we going to do? Maybe one too many, perhaps. Just one too many. Gets up, putting him back in the mid screen, now forcing Scorpion Prox towards the corner, but Ansh is back with the kick to the face and a shadow kick for good measure. It says a lot. But the standing front foot from Johnny Cage, so acrobatic. Another flawless block, but this time I love the choice to do the up three just to keep it safer. Mm -hmm. I love that choice. Speaking of which, a turnaround now from Nicholas. The flawless block to mess with the frame data. No meter to amplify, though, which again means no meter to turn that into a combo either. Scorpion Prox, unfortunate there. Yeah, went for the grab there. Unfortunate whiff. Gets grabbed again. Escape fail. Wave dash in the down one. And then eats more forest balls. Okay, both players now have access to Fatable. And that's a jump, but it doesn't quite confirm. Oh, the dash in. That was no punish. That was just a counter hit, though. An opportunity maybe to get that fatal blow cancel. The final hit whiffs. The back 1-1 one, one hits its mark. Even set again. One game apiece. One round in that next game. Who's going to take the lead here? Yeah, perfect back and forth play from both twins who know each other so well. Will confirm. Forces the breakaway again. Off of the back one, Skywalker tries to bait the button. No take on the bait. Again, looking for a whiff punish. Oh, no, thank you. We're going to turn that into so much more and a 35% into even more. The crushing blow throw. Oh, God, Ragnarok. I, I blinked and missed it, mate. I blinked and missed 70% health. Uh, yeah, that. Crushing blow, man. That's one of the, my favorite one animations for the throws. The sucks that you're out, breaks your ribs, gets the anti air, forces the breakaway. Now sitting there with no defensive meter, having to deal with Fujin. Excellent movement. Wind wall just a bar away. And there you have with on the crushing blow on top of that. You know what? That was just a one for the road. Yeah. I think that one was. As now we're going back into character select. And this will be the last chance. This is the final moment, right? This is, yep. if this character don't work, you've wasted it. Mm -hmm. So you've got to make sure you're thinking about it and you're ready to go. Who would he pick against Fujin? It's how deep in the bag do you want to go? Do you want to pull the Cabal out? Do you want to try to meet him with the Fujin mirror? Because you also know that whatever you pick, it's not the end of the game, right? Your, your brother's now going to be able to change character to something more favorable. So you've got to think hard about this final, cha uh, this final character. All right, giving it a lot of thought here. Liu Kang, interesting. Are we going to settle it? So I see, right, at the very least, I caught the command grab, so that is, well, of course, a very common move with Liu Kang. Super, super useful. Armor break, pressure, mix up, whatever. Been very successful with the command grab characters up until this point, too. Has been. Absolutely, you can say that again. But is it all going to end here? Nicholas with the Fujin, the Wind God. Ooh, walks right over the fireball. Scrum Cross coming off a whole lot of meter in that exchange. 
trying to almost bait an anti-air there with the tornado, but lost to the anti-air all the same. All right, the stance has been activated. All we're right. starting to build up damage already, and we're just spending meter, building towards that all-important crushing blow. There was an attempt there once more, maybe a down three, perhaps. Either way, does not matter, because that corner pressure belongs to Scorpion Prox, who just continues to push. Wow, it the pressure here has been absolutely insane. Getting Nicholas in the corner, wearing him down. And just like that, a very dominant first round from Scorbrox. This could have been the pick. All right, Nicholas pushing his way out of the corner. Trying to dash him with the check with the standing ones. I do quite like currently Scorpion Prox isn't really pressing any buttons that have almost any risk of whiff punishment. They recover so fast. Mm -hmm. However, a bit too cute with that one, trying to pop the stance and get away with it. Nicholas says, not in my grand finals. <laughs> I'm going to get a button out there, mate. Just you watch. I believe, actually, I've seen a close range wind push and now a far range. So medium range might be the KB. You saw that read the fireball. Skywalk completely over, got the punish. Came off the break here, though. Now, Scorbrox with the jump in, doesn't get anything. All but right. then escape fail, es all cards now on the table. <laughs> escape failed, bicycle kicks, I'm pretty sure, ready. And I think, oh, yeah, that, that's the scariest Liu Kang to fight. And they had it ready, the crushing blow. Yo, go me, I was keeping count. All right, got the buffs up. Ducks all the fireballs, flawless blocks the lows. And then catches the back two wins, says, no, no, no. Whiff punish. Knew exactly where that was going to end. Standing jab to the face. Which allows tournament point for Nicholas. However, bicycle kick still there. And the, oh, there's the command grab. Didn't even need to spend it because now the rest of it is a nightmare. It's going to be grab or it's going to be mid. In this case, the breakaway. And now you really are at the mercy of Liu Kang. Here we go. KB1. The grab is still a threat. Yeah, Liu Kang in the final round with all crushing blows available is the, one of the most dangerous characters in this game. Anti-air, fatal blow. Hold on a minute. There is a strong possibility that Nicholas can bring this one back. This fatal blow is going to do a ton of damage, and Fujin still hits hard. There is a breakaway, mind you. Okay. Expensive read there. Came off all of his meter. Now Scorpion Frost can just kind of work his way backwards for Spoochin long range buttons. A delay on the forward four. Happy to sit there and block it. Keep my Liu Kang still has that throw crushing blow available. That could get him the round. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. One more play. The wake up buttons. Scorpion Prox, the dash in button, oh, and the flying the kick. kick. That was so close to being the end of the tournament. And a unpredictable and un comfortable final wake up sequence. The wake up dash forward down three. And that wasn't even what won the round. It's the fact that he had the audacity to even try it. Yes, once again. Uh oh. Two. Tied up 2-2 in grand finals. All right. Okay. Loads up. One, two. One more of those and we're in business. Great use of the flawless block there. Oh, it doesn't get the punish on that. No, I'm surprised at least didn't try and fly and kick, perhaps. All right, ducks oh, the command the, the chin checker, no meter to break away. Has to hold all this 40%. I say read, but I know duck OS is a thing in this game. <laughs> Just a quick disclaimer. I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. I want to believe, oh my oh! god, the breakaway into the pinnacle. That is going to rescale. It has just been armor break on armor break on KB on flawless block into God knows what else. Uh, Nicholas still in a pretty decent home, but then stands up into the fireball. <coughs> and in doing so now brings Scorpion Prox the reverse. It's now tournament point. Good block on the sweep. Eats a fireball phase. That is a counter. Flawless block forces the breakaway. Now, no defensive meter available, but two bars of offense. That's the third bicycle kick, Ragnarok. We and could start building into some dirt here. And he spent the second bar on it. Interesting. Or a little bit of extra damage, potentially. Looking for the dash in once more. 
Every time Liu Kang gets close now, it is a scary, scary game to play. The cancel into the throw. The corner positioning. Nicholas. Just let that rip. Marches him up. Oh, nice little side switch. Yeah. We'll take those. Alright, the he eats the dive kick. You can't you can't put him out yet because all Luke Kang needs is that one touch, but this could be the round for Nicholas. Goes for the last chip avoided. Bicycle last kick. Breath. Puts two on it again. Scorpion Prox opted not to spend it, and I gotta say, I think that's kind of smart because now it's gonna be tournament point both Nicholas and Scorpion Prox with the Liu Kang bicycle kick. Now we spend it when it means the most, when it could win us the tournament. That's a hell of a thing to get hit by on the first beginning of the round. Anti air, get out of my airspace, Fujin. Go back to mythology. <laughs> Crushing blow, oh my god. Let's it go. Gets hit by the second fireball. There's that flawless block into the command grab. Scorpion Prox just needs a little bit more. Let's it go though. The breakaway was good to go. So Nicholas has so much work to do. All right, 50 points of health. One touch is all it would take to do it. Cancels. Oh, that's it. Nope, he doesn't turn it into anything. The grab. I don't know why he didn't put anything on the end of that string. There was last breath, so perhaps didn't want to get punished. Oh, bets it all on a grab that does not work. A and grab that. and a dream, duck and a punish, and there you have it. That's the end of this major, major chapter there with Scorpion Prox. The choice and the change going into Liu Kang made all the difference. And it's just... For me, a wonderful end of the Mortal Kombat 11 Combo Breaker chapter as we now enter the new age where this time, hopefully next year mm -hmm. with Combo Breaker, you know, we'll be seeing these players again, I have no doubt. And a full array of characters will be on display then. We'll have the cameos will be in addition to that. Who knows what that'll mean for gameplay, which we will we still see. don't know. We will see, though, June 8th, First gameplay trailer confirmed by Ed Boon, or for your gameplay at the uh, showcase. But I gotta, I, I gotta say, this has been a a, a wonderful tournament for everyone. Um, it, it's just, it's great to see people still gathering together mm -hmm. and and just enjoying the game and showing their passion for the game. Players that have been on the grind online in the various online leagues and, as I said, exhibitions one-offs, whatever it is, people are always getting involved. There's so many people streaming the game. There are people uh, trying to make content for the game. You know, they're passionate about this and everyone's trying to get themselves hyped up and ready for what's gonna be this next stage in the entire community. Mortal Kombat 11 has lasted four years and in four mere months, this journey is going to continue. And I'm, I'm so excited for that chapter to open. Absolutely, and of course, if you're looking for more MK11, like I said, anytime, it doesn't matter what day you look, there is always an event between Rips Arena, the Coliseum, countless exhibitions and tournaments are available for you out there if you want to get started. I encourage you, if you haven't ever been to Combo Breaker, it's one of my favorite events to come to every year, 24-hour venue, so you can always find games. I mean, you can look out and see the sea of people in the crowd. It's, it's a great event to come to, and I get to see my man catch up. I'm glad we got to share a desk. Right? It First fantastic. time ever. It was a lot of fun, man. It was a lot of fun. and uh, It's always a pleasure to return to Combo Breaker. It's no secret that it's our favorite tournament of the year. Mm -hmm. So we always try, and uh, we were very fortunate this year, and we can't thank our own community enough for the generosity that allowed that to happen this time over. And uh, it's it certainly has been... It, it's been the Combo Breaker we know and love, and... That was, that was all I wanted. It just continues to, to maintain this level of excellence where there is so much to do. There are so many games. There's so much extra fun little things to have. There's an arcade room upstairs. You know, I had mystery game earlier on today. And uh, there's just, if, if you're ever on the fence about attending a tournament like this and you're yet to do it, do it. If you are in a position that you can, you can take that step and go to a major offline fighting game event, 
Just you owe it to yourself to give it a go, and I promise you'll have a wonderful time. I mean, where else could you go to find an offline Primal Rage tournament in 2023? Go ahead, go ahead and show. Only here, only here. By the way, yeah, these medals, these these are the medals that will be given out, of course, to Mortal Kombat, uh, who worked incredibly hard because it was a brutal top eight. I mean, we're looking at we're looking at the difference in play styles, the difference in characters. Of course, the twins in attendance, you knew that a grand finals with them was a possibility, a strong possibility, just based on their performances last year. But we had players like Full Auto. I know he didn't get the result that he was after, but mm -hmm. you know, Full Auto's uh, resume in MK11 very much speaks for itself. And there's a reason he was in top eight in the fashion that he was in. We had King Gambler. We had just this, this massive combination. We saw a lot of Cabal. Right. And I can't really say I'm surprised because there was a lot of Cabal players that made the trip out here. And hey, he's a really good character. Yeah, we saw Ludi ascending again into the top eight. Time. Great performance from him as well. But I'm just, I'm, I'm so excited to see where the players can go from here. Uh, we're getting the players set up for the sort of finishing ceremony as we are going to be distributing the top eight medals, which. Look, if you go to one of these tournaments, getting getting a medal is a huge achievement, right? Because it's just something that signifies your progress, your performance, the hard work that pays off, something you can hold and look at and be like, right, I earned this. Yeah. You know, and I had to beat so many players to get this. And it's a, it's a great feeling. But there's only one trophy. And that one trophy uh, is going to be Scorpion Prox. Um, I, it's really bad because... I am trying so hard not to get them mixed up, and I've never <laughs> been in this situation before. Normally, it's the other way around. You're getting hit by the twin mix? I am, and that's never happened before. <laughs> but that changes today. Okay. It is time to dish out those lovely meadows. So, in seventh place, it's the one and only Too Easy. The man of many games, I believe it was seven games in this tournament alone. Sunio with the joint seventh, the Robocop master, Mr. Murphy. Big Murph. And I mean, the zoning god, right? Ludi, an amazing performance to make it this far in the line. It's gonna be full auto. A player who, like I said, legacy speaks for itself in the Sindel master. Euphoring up next. That top four finish is more than impressive. King Gambler was the last North American hope. I know he would have wanted to get a bit further in, but look, this, this mountain to climb that was Nicholas and the main man. First place, Scorpion Prox, the final champion of main stage. Mortal Kombat 11, the combo breaker, the twins, Ragnarok, can they be stopped? I don't know. Not right now. They are on top of the world, and that big, sexy trophy confirms it. They get to go home and hang their heads high that they were able to withstand all of these fantastic players through this tournament and well into this top eight. What a show it made to see, and I'm glad I was here to see it with you. Sadly, folks, when it comes to Mortal Kombat 11, that's all we have time for. I know I've said thank you a million times, but you know what? Screw it, I'm gonna say it again. Thank you all so much for tuning in, for your support for Mortal Kombat, your support for fighting games, for Combo Breaker, everyone involved. I wanna say thanks to the staff, the production, all the people doing the hard stuff while we're just sorting here and, and just talking video games for a few <laughs> hours, right? There's a lot of people that go in to make these events what they are. It's often a thankless task, but I wanna thank them right here. 100%. Right because it's 1,000% deserved. My name is Ketchup, joined by Ragnarok. Thank you so much, mate, for joining me here. It's a pleasure. You're welcome, my brother. This has been Mortal Kombat at Combo Breaker. There's a whole day of matches left to go tomorrow. So stay tuned on social media, Twitch, all that good stuff, and you can find out more information. Signing off now, thank you, and good night. You thought that was fire? We're not done yet, because after this break, more combo breaker action is coming right to you. Don't go nowhere. Don't forget to head on over to the combo breaker shop to check out all the amazing merch. But don't delay because that merch is going to go quick.